the Fish Nerds. It's a celebration of fish, fishing, and eating that is always interesting, usually fun, and mostly true. I'm Justin Carter of Kitten Outdoors, and here are the Fish Nerds. Hooray! You did it! It's like mad. Say, hey, welcome to the Back of the Fish Nerds. It's been like two years since I've seen you, and you're you're still wearing the same shirt. <laughs> you ever take a bath? Yeah. Yeah? we got to talk loud so we can hear you. So, first of all, what is Kitten Outdoors? Kitten Outdoors is a company that gets kids off of video games and outdoors. You can't do both at the same time? Well, it's a good balance between video games and outdoors. Because mm-hmm. that's good for you. Sure. Now, do you ice fish? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Do you, now, let me ask you, now you just talked about getting kids off video games and getting outdoors. Now, I'm a big ice fisherman. I'm a guide now. Right? And I want to take you fishing. And when we go ice fishing, we drill a hole in the ice, and we put a sonar on top of the hole, which shows you where the fish are, and then you can see your jig going down, and it's like a video game. Would that count as being outside, or would that be count as playing video games, or how would I count that? Um, that would still count as being outside. Yes. Technically, you're just reading a sonar to know where the fish are. Right, but it feels like a video game. Yeah. Which is why it's so fun. What is your favorite fish to fish for? Uh, largemouth bass. Largemouth bass. And is there something about other fishermen that makes you crazy? Uh, they catch a lot of huge fish. They outfish you? Yeah. That makes me crazy, too. So, hey, good. Casting Carter, thank you for coming on the Fishman's Podcast. Good to see you again. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All Bye. right. I'm Clay Groves. And I'm Mike Crooker. Mike, who are you? I'm are a big you? fan of the podcast. Um, I'm here to help out. One of the great things about... Well, I'm going to brag a little bit. One of the things I really like about doing the podcast is the people we meet. And you're one of our kind of people we met in the last year. And uh, it kind of changed a lot of what the show was about. You've actually had an impact on the show. By the way, all the noise you hear in the background, this show is recording, recording live at the New England Fishing Outdoor Expo in Boxborough, Massachusetts. So you're going to hear a lot of noise today. And I can't fix it. We're in a noisy place. <laughs> but one of the things the Fish Nerds podcast, the people all weekend ask me what are we are about, we're about our listeners. And so, Mike, you're a listener. Why do you listen to this show? What are you doing here? Well, I started out hearing, hearing about you guys on um, NPR. We're and famous. And fishy famous. Yeah. And then um, from there, I basically just started supporting and really following everything that we do, yeah, you know? We, yeah, and it, it's a lot of fun. We, you know, we, we really want to build community. And speaking of community, we're at the New England Fishing Outdoor Expo. This entire episode is going to be a montage of a tour of the expo. We talked to hundreds and hundreds of people uh, here in the last two days, three days, and tons of people who are selling stuff. And so we're going to take you on a journey, a long journey, through the New England Fishing Outdoor Expo um, and just play a whole bunch of clips of different people with different innovative products and things they want to sell. And... You can check them all out. We'll have links to everything at fishnerds.com. And it is rowdy in here. It is busy. Yeah. So we're, there's actually an owl presentation in front of us about to happen. which will be. Oh, is that tomorrow. the seminar they're doing over there? Yeah, that's a seminar we're going to be uh, dealing with. Now, last night I was here, and they did an owl presentation, and the owl escaped. <laughs> and it, it, it flew up to the top. There's a big gazebo here. And it flew up to the top of the gazebo. And it was there apparently until 5 o'clock this morning. Now, owls are never in a hurry. They just kind of sit in one place and they do what owls do, which is wait for prey to come along. There's not a lot of food here for them. <laughs> uh, owls don't really do well in hot dogs. Oh, well, I, excuse me, I, I could be wrong. I think owls don't do well on hot dogs. They might do fine. <laughs> uh, they certainly don't uh, do well on eating fishermen, which is good news. Uh, they, in fact, they don't compete at all with fishermen, I think. Never seen an owl swoop down and catch a fish. I've never had that issue. Although if I saw it, I'd be so happy. You know, I did once see a bat swoop down and take a mouthful of water uh, while I was fishing once. Well, that 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 was cool. But I've hit him a couple times with the fly rod at dusk. Oh uh, yeah. But by, by the way, no relationship to an owl whatsoever. I don't know why I brought that up. But it, it flies. It flies. <laughs> so owls are just like bats. Yeah. 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 We can go with that. All right, well, yeah, here's a whole bunch of stuff from the New England Fishing Outdoor Expo. Uh, enjoy it, and if you like this kind of stuff, you should come next year uh, in the end of January to Boxborough, Massachusetts, the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo, uh, and go fish Dan. Really, really throws a nice show, I and mean, there's a lot of really great products and people here. There's a lot of vendors here. Yeah, it is. 
All right, ClayGrossFishNurse.com, hanging out at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. I got Go Fish Dan, not just Go Fish Dan, but the Go Fish Dan, the owner, operator of the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo in beautiful downtown Boxborough, Massachusetts. How's the show going? Oh, Clay, this is phenomenal. I mean, third year in this building. We finally got the word out that we are the fishing show, and we are the show with all high quality and no junk. And, I mean, the people that are coming around from last night on Friday with massive crowds today, elbow to elbow, you can't move. I'm hoping for the same tomorrow. But I'm just excited as, as a passionate outdoorsman that this is what the people want and they're here and they're enjoying themselves and I'm seeing smiles and, and people buying gear and it, I'm just so excited I don't even know what to say. Uh, it's really cool. And congratulations, by the way. I mean, to, to this, I know how much work, why I don't know how much work, I, I, I have a feeling <laughs> that the amount of work that I imagine you do for the show, probably multiply that by 10 to get it out here. Yes. Um, I remember talking to you through email the day before the show and even your tone in the email was... I'm in a hurry. What do you want? I got a lot to do. Right. So now that it's going, is it kind of like the pressure coming off and just kind of yeah. a train running forward? Yeah. It's and, and yeah, I mean, pretty much it is. It's a ton of work. So Labor Day, it really ramps up. And um, and starting Columbus Day, I'll just say, you burn 16, 18-hour days all the way through the expo. And, uh, and then after the expo, I basically get my sleep back. Excellent. As after the expo, um, I'm going to invite you just to come up. Go fish, Dan. This is my fishing with me. Yes. And just for a relaxing day, on the ice, no pressure, just relax. So, uh, would you come fish with me? I I will be there under these conditions. All right. We catch three perch <laughs> and one laker. Uh, you know, I can actually that I can deliver. Okay. I can, so I'll be there. I can deliver that. It might, I might I might over deliver. You might That's end fine. up with three lakers and four perch. That's fine. You know, I'll take it. Whatever. But, but I can I can totally do that for you. I gotta tell you, um, a lot of fish nerds fans have been coming through here. They, they saw it on the website, they saw it on, they heard it on the podcast, and they're coming through, and they're excited about it, and they've told me personally that they're glad that you invited me to come out here. And they've been, they're from the Worcester area. They're oh, locals here. yeah, that's awesome. So, well, yeah, and you can see the seminars. I mean, you're pretty close to one of the seminar stages, but think about the bass elites that show up here on the hard trot, doing demos, getting autographs, the, the guys that are doing the seminars for salt water. I mean, legendary people, right? That's in exciting, our yeah. Yeah, so it's... This is a place to go where you can have full access to them, and, I'm, and you're interviewing some of these people, correct? I am, yeah. Yes. I'm so many, I forgot who's who. Good. But, but they're coming by all day. I'm making the rounds. Man, thanks for having us out, and if you ever need anything, just let us know, okay? No, I love the fish nerds, and also, folks, you know, Clay has been so gracious to give me a couple of plugs, but I just wanted to say, look at the fish nerds, and if you want to go ice fishing with a registered New Hampshire guide... Pick up the phone and call Clay, and it's a great time on the ice. Oh, thank you. All right, thanks. I don't know why we shake hands. No one can see us. Because <laughs> the interview's over. It's over. My battery's almost dead. We're going to race the clock here, okay? Clay yeah. Gross, FishNurse.com, hanging out in New England, fishing and outdoor expo in beautiful downtown Boxborough, Massachusetts. Woo! I know. You know, have you been here before? I haven't. This is my first trip. Ah, oh, it's crazy. I actually stayed at this hotel once in the middle of the night when I was tired of driving. And I had no idea. If I knew there was a, in the lobby was a pool, my kids would be here. Why aren't you in the pool? I don't know. Uh, I got them too busy at the booth helping out, talking to customers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm here with Matt. Matt, what's your last name? Matt Gilly. Matt Gilly from Salmon Pro Charters. You are a salmon charter. I am. In Maine. I'm a registered Maine fishing guide. I take people salmon fishing. First of all, congratulations. Being a Maine guide is known to be the hardest in the country to get. I just did a whole series on becoming a New Hampshire licensed guide. Yep. I'm told it's number two for hardness. Yep. Um, so you're better than me. But uh, <laughs> it was insane. It, New Hampshire was insane. I can't imagine it being harder than that. It was hard. It was the only test I've ever studied for in my life. Mm -hmm. I took a four-day preparatory course. Yep. Without that, I would have failed beyond the shadow of a doubt, and I've spent a lifetime in the woods and on the waters. Yeah, I went yes. to guide school as well. Without, yep. without that... I can't, because on the website they tell you, here are the things you need to know. Yeah. But the depth of knowledge and the types of questions they ask you, almost not fishing related whatsoever. No. Expert at wildlife, expert at mountaineering, expert at map and compass, expert at everything except fishing. Everything except fishing. There was five minutes worth of talk about fishing in a two-hour test. Yeah. It was tough. It's insane, but congratulations. You can wear that patch. And there's my patch right there. See? 
Oh, mine's on my old beat-up fleece that yeah. I fish with. Yes. Yeah, you have to wear them when you're working. But yes. congratulations. So Salmon Pro Charters, where are you out of? We're out of Hamden, Maine. Mm-hmm. So that means everywhere I fish is an hour and a half, two-hour tow for me to get to the best lakes in Maine. we got plenty of them. So you don't, you know, Maine, Maine is great because you can salmon fish. Don't take my pen. You can take my pen. <laughs> that was Wicked Fisher. Um, anyway, so Maine is a great salmon fishery statewide. Now, I was talking to New Hampshire Fishing Game. We're not allowed to keep salmon through the ice because the fishery is so weak. Correct. Yep. Maine. Maine, we can keep them. We've got plenty of salmon. Yes, yeah, we it, catch and release a lot of fish, but we do like to eat them once now, in a while. Now, do you charter year-round? Yes, I do. Ice fishing, too. Yes, ice fishing's really? a hard sell for those out-of-staters, but I keep uh, them warm. It, you know, that's the thing is, if people don't realize, in modern ice fishing, it's all about comfort. Absolutely. They Dress in all the clothes you own and get in my shack with my heater and you'll be fine. That's exactly how I put it. Yeah. It's... It's they, they always say, I don't want to be on the ice in the cold. I'm like, it's not about being cold. No. We're going to make you comfortable, and you're going to catch fish. Now, are you getting them jigging or setting traps? We catch 90% of our setting traps. Really? I'm it is. Opposite. I'm a jigger. There's so. an art to it, and I've been years of floundering around, but we've got to figure it figured out pretty good now. You've got it zeroed in. We do, yes. Let's say typical day, 40, 50 salmon? Typical day, oh, geez, 140, 150. Yeah, right. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> now, salmon fishing is a little bit different than, than the typical trap fishing that people do, right? It is, yes. What's, what it, tell me about, like, because we don't do it in New Hampshire through the ice. Why? What, how? How is it salmon fishing through the ice different with a trap than any other? Like, like, what's special about it? How do you do it? One thing that we like to do is we fish anywhere from two feet below the ice to ten feet below the ice. So you're fishing in the water column, not down near the bottom. We're fishing in the top of the water column. I like to be out in thirty or forty feet of water, get away from shore a little bit. Mm-hmm. The best part about salmon fishing with a trap is when you run over to that flag, you know it's a salmon because the reel is screaming so fast, the trap is shaking. Oh, it's shaking water, bubbling out. Shaking the water is bubbling. Yeah. You feel like you better grab it quick before something breaks. Yes. Right, but if you grab it too fast, you can lose a the fish. Then you can lose a fish. It's no easy chore to land one. And, and you let your client set the hook on all those, or do you the first one and hand to them? Or I you? talk them through it, and I let them do every bit of it. Right. I told them I've caught enough fish, I get more enjoyment out of watching them catch a fish. I, it's, it, you know, I'm shocked. Yep. I am, as, a, as someone who just now started guiding, yep. the first time a client, my, my first time trip was a lake trout trip. Yep. And I announced on my show I'm not a lake trout guide, and the guy demanded we go lake trout fishing in a lake yep. I refused to fish in. So Perfect start. Yep. yep. Perfect yep. start. And he, but he knew it. He knew he wasn't going to catch me with fish. Right. He caught 12 lakers yep. that day. That's but a good day. watching him pull his first lake trout out of the ice, yes. the joy I felt was reminding me of when my kid caught her first fish. And it's just, and every time now, I've, since I take clients out, watching them catch their first new species through the ice, I feel that joy over and over and over. Are you feeling the same? Absolutely. Yeah. I have caught enough fish. I take much more enjoyment watching someone catch their first salmon, whether yeah. it's through the ice or out of the boat. You hear them squealing and howling. They're watching a fish jump out in the open water. It's Beautiful. really a thrill. All right, yes. so uh, trolling or jigging? for open water for salmon. Trolling, we troll all day long and we catch a lot of fish doing it. That's fun. Yep. That's yep. fun. That's it, cool. Thank yep. you. Congratulations. Now, so you make a full-time living at this or is this a part-time gig for you? We're very close to full-time now. Hey, I have a supportive wife and she said, go for it. So that's oh, one reason we're down here. Yes. Beautiful. I hope you book a ton of trips. If you ever want to come to New Hampshire, I'll take you fishing and I'll be happy to come out to Maine and check out Thank you. We need too. to swap a trip off once in a while. Anytime. I'd Anytime. love to do that stuff. All right. So yep. Salmon Pro Charters at salmonprocharters.com Com. com you got it and you guys are all over facebook we sure are good share your stuff on our stuff we'll pump it out to our people and thank you so much that's awesome thanks for having yeah. us with adam from vintage fish company adam you having a good time i'm having a blast yeah well so welcome welcome to the expo is this your first time coming here it's my first time at this show you booking yeah. trips i haven't yet but we're ready the books the books here and now we're ready to put some names in it right, so you're a fishing a tuna guy we are we're a tuna charter out of Portsmouth, new hampshire and we also fish for ground fish, cod, haddock, and pollock. That's cool. My yeah. favorite cusk. I love cusk yeah, We fish for cusk, too. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. We catch them. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's cool. And you're out of Portsmouth? We're out of Portsmouth. And do you have a store there, too? Tons of a We have a... Store. Yeah, we're, we, we sell off of the boat. Northern Lights is the name of our boat. We sell off a fishing vessel, Northern Lights. And we have a website, vintagefishcompany.com, where you can buy all of our branded apparel. And we have nautical gear and gifts and tackle. We have new signature tuna rods. So the rods that we that we use on the boat, we also sell. Perfect. And the tackle that we use, that we use to catch our fish, we also sell. That's cool. And what's your success rate like? I've been tuna fishing once. Uh, do you know Captain Sean? I do. Okay, so I've been out with him a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Never caught a tuna fish. What's your success rate? Tuna, tuna fishing is also tuna wishing, and you never know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Sometimes you can, 
you can minimize the odds if you know what you're doing and you, you've got some good some good uh, coordinates that, that have produced. It's all about talking to your friends and helping each other. But um, any day you can bring a tune in is a good day. It's a totally good day. And while you're tuna fishing, you're catching other fish too, right? We do. We do. Taking up some mackerels or some other ground fish. Yeah, and all we that do. Much. And uh, we've actually, last year we caught about a 600-pound poor beagle, which is pretty interesting. Wait, say that again. 600 pound uh, what? Poor, a poor beagle shark. Oh, wow. 600 pounds? Yeah. It was a huge fish, and uh, it was a lot of fun to fight. I can imagine. And, uh, my, my best is a 300-pound ma- uh, mako. Mako, yeah. yeah. With, with Captain Sean. Yeah. Crazy fish to catch. Yeah. Yeah. It scares the hell out of me. I don't know how you guys do it. You guys are so much tougher than me. So I'm, a, I, I'm an ice fisherman, so I get a fish that's one pound. I'm like, I got one pound of fish. Then you guys that's crazy. awesome. That's cool. Well, hey, congratulations. Is it what you do full time? I do. I have, I have uh, another job that I do as well. I've always been curious because I, I know very few people who make a full time living in the fishing industry. Yeah. It's really no, challenging. I, I work full time for a power company, yeah. building power lines, and uh, I fish in the summer. And, Whatever I can. Fantastic. So that's Vintage Fishing Company. Website again? Vintage Fish Company. Vintage Fish Company. Dot com. Dot com. And you guys are on social media? We are. We're all over Facebook and Instagram. Look us up. And uh, as we say, get social with us. We will totally do that. And if you share things with us, we will always share everything out. Vintage Fish Company. Dot com. Thank you. Thank you. But I got Ryan <laughs> Dubay here. Uh, Long time listeners, everyone knows who Ryan is. Ryan, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? It, uh, wonderful. It is the busiest I have ever seen this show this you year. You know why? i tell you exactly why. Clay Groves and the Fish Nerds are here. Okay, that's that's the number two reason. <laughs> the number one reason, the, the number one reason is, he just touched my butt. Um, <laughs> He's smiling about it. <laughs> right. That was, uh, that was Richard Yvonne from yes. Maple Outdoors. Yeah. The, the number one reason, I think, is no ice in Massachusetts. Yeah, I, I would think, have to agree. I think two thirds of these people would be fishing right now if they could. Now they should be taking the kayaks out and going out and catching some rainbow trout right now. Uh, that, that's actually what I would be doing. But where I live, everything's still frozen. Yeah, and, and so what are you doing here? Uh, selling kayaks. Selling kayaks. Have you sold yeah. any? Uh, about myself, I think about a dozen. That's been... pretty darn good. And what kind of you're you're a feel free guy? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think honestly, looking at what's happening, this week i really think that kayak fishing is going to blow up this year i have not seen so many people excited about kayak i'll fishing. tell you what, it goes back to the ice fishing problem happening. you may be right it's, actually it, if you want to, the upside of global warming is more kayak sales and the <laughs> what i foresee if and here's what ice fishing companies should start doing marketing those smaller rods for kayak fishing Simple, stow away. You yes. kayak and a day in the water. They don't take up any space at all. You can vertical jig all day, yeah. catch great fish with them, and they're missing an opportunity to partner with you guys to feel free, or whoever you're doing, yeah. because it's so obvious. You know, it's funny you mention that. We, last year, were going to have a tournament, and I think we'll do it this year, with Snoopy Poles. Yes, I remember you doing that. Yeah, and I've <laughs> so, got some great fish on Snoopy Rods. Absolutely. absolutely. But you can blow it up. We just use all those ice fishing equipment. People have this equipment sitting in their garages. They're not using it this year. They should be fishing with it. I'll tell you a story. My daughters love kayak fishing. Yes. I got them each a little, one of those cheapy, like six foot long kids kayaks. Right. But they're super stable. The kids can jump off them. Swim, swim. So my daughter last year, my six year old, she's seven now, yep. she would snorkel and spot fish and then climb up on her kayak and she had an ice fishing rod on there. She'd take her ice fishing rod and then jig the fish up. Oh, that's So perfect. she was her own fish finder. And the nice thing about these feel free kayaks, these bigger kayaks, these fishing kayaks, is stability is really important. Yep. And so you can use them as a platform. Yes. And so bass fishermen are loving them, right? They're eating them up. They stand up in them all day long. Yep. Yeah. And they've got motors in them. Right. Every That's the other thing I that's think that's insane. coming. Ours has got, coming out this year, both a motor and pedal system. Yep. That motor there, the Helix, weighs 13 pounds with a lithium-ion battery on it. So you don't have to carry a giant marine battery? Whole thing right there. That's unbelievable. Yes. And you can trade in your car and buy it. How? <laughs> how... Um, how long would that battery last? My under now this boat that's this different company, so I don't know oh, all this. We don't like those guys. No, they're wonderful. I've got no issue. But <laughs> from what I understand, that the, the demo it was going all day. That's amazing. Yes, that's amazing. And so you can fish on these like a crazy person, have yeah. a great time. Uh, that's really cool. So, right, are you having a good time? Yes. I am having a yeah. wonderful time actually. I got a feeling you haven't stopped talking in two days. Uh, I we put the booth strategically next to the water. <laughs> no, Ryan was pointing at actual like bottled water, so yeah, it's really funny. Well, Ryan, thanks for coming on the show, and we're hanging out. This is uh, Ryan at the Contucat River Canoe Booth, and he is selling feel-free kayaks. Ryan Dubay, 
longtime fish nerd supporter and fan, and we're so always so happy to see you. Thanks for coming Absolutely. on. Absolutely, have fun. I'm here with Ralphie. Now, Ralphie owns Radfish Lures, radfishlures.com, and I've seen him at like 10 different expos in the last three years, and I've never got to talk to him because he's always selling so many lures. The only thing Ralphie likes more than fishing lures is money. That's what I hear. Ralphie, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. I first want to uh, tell you that this fall you raised money for breast cancer research, and I want to thank you for doing that. Um, you sold pink uh, swim baits uh, to raise money for the Breast Cancer Foundation, and I was touched by that. It motivated me to get in that same game and do the same thing. Awesome. So thank you for doing that. That's it awesome. makes a difference, You're very well. and people care about it, and that's cool. cool. And companies that care excite me because it means that I feel good about buying your lures. Now, you own a lure company. Sure do. Do you pour your own baits? Uh, we don't pour our own baits. They're actually good. That's you, a terrible job. They're they're actually, actually, to do it for yeah, yeah. I want to live a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're uh, they're actually manufactured, and they're manufactured by uh, some of the best manufacturers in the country that have been in the business a long, long time. That are ex-professional fishermen. Excellent. So, so it's a quality product. That's for sure. And I tell you one thing, I love what you're doing. You giving out business cards today. Absolutely. That, that you've. You've like rubber band fishing lures too. Absolutely, we do a sample every year. We attach our business card with two or three different worms, uh, just just to give somebody something to go home with in case they didn't buy anything or didn't get to spend some money with us or, or, or things like that. So yes. we give a card away. We give uh, we gave a three inch decal away, and we also gave away the radfish decals with the breast cancer awareness logo on it. Perfect. And we're still raising money for breast cancer awareness. You're, here you're still doing it. And that's, in, that's so in, good. Uh, in January. So. That's so good. Yeah, it's almost February now. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Now, you guys must be killing it at the show this week. This place is so busy. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. It's always a good turnoff for us. And uh, these guys run a good show. And uh, the people know that. And they show up. They sure do. Now, how long have you been running Radfish Lures? Uh, this is our fifth year in business. Fifth uh, years in one business. One year of startup, four years of actually doing business with a website and a, and a business. So. Now, is this your full-time gig? It's not my full-time gig. It's, it's starting to become full-time gig, to be honest with you. And it actually kind of is a full-time gig because I... I never really stopped working, so I work at my full-time job. I come home and I work on radfish, and I wake up and I work on radfish. So it, it kind of is full-time it feels and it, because it? it's full-time in my life, but yeah. uh, I have a full-time job also. So. Good, and, and that's what everyone tells me is, like, keep your full-time job until you can't anymore yeah, yeah. and then Absolutely. see what happens. Absolutely. So. Uh, I don't like to sit around, so uh, I just want to stay busy either way. All right, good. That's Ralphie from radfishlures.com. We love these guys. And if you want some good baits, go over to their website, check it out. We'll link back at fishners.com to everything they have. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And we thank you for having us. Um, yeah. You guys are you guys are great at what you do, and we need more we need more people like you guys out there stirring I up agree. the fishing world and I having agree. a little fun. Yeah. And um, sure, anybody that wants to check us out, we're at radfishlures.com. All our baits are made in the USA. They're uh, they're they're a great product. Um, we stand behind everything we sell. Yeah. Uh, my hand pick and select all my own baits. You test each one. Own bird. Yeah. I almost pop. pop yeah. all, we almost do by looking at them and making sure everything's okay. Good quality oh, control. We like Perfect. I have one question for you. Sure, Follow sure, up. Sure, buddy. This is a follow. You're gonna like this question. If if you got in a fight with Jack Houghton from Daddy Macaroons, <laughs> who would win? <laughs> <laughs> Jack's got a couple pounds on me, but I'm a feisty little <laughs> but guy. But you maybe have reach. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. I got a couple extra tools in my pocket that I can use you know, sometimes. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> no, but that, that, Jack's a great guy. We love Jack. And yeah. uh, Jack's on our side. So We're all on the same Hopefully team. it's me and Jack against everybody else. Love it. Love right, it. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. I'm hanging out with Liam Geary from Backwoods Graphics. Backwoods Dash. Graphics.com. We figured that out in the previous interview. Yes, yeah, so this is our second try at this because <laughs> I'm not smart enough to push the record button on this stupid machine. But hey, welcome to the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. It's cool to meet you. You did our graphics work for us for this. We had some decals you guys made for us. Uh, I did, and I hope you're extremely satisfied with them. Well, as we know, um, the Fishner's decal is the best that you've made yet. The best. The My best. daughter uh, picked it out especially. It is her favorite. You win clout, bragging rights, and you got a backwards graphic sticker. I got my own. I'm sorry, but grumps. We fished with um, strike indicators, not bobbers. We don't have stickers. We have decals. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's get it straight. There's a difference. 20 lashings with a wet noodle. Grow up, man. Come on. How old's your daughter? She is seven. Seven. Fun age. Fun age. What's her name? Her name is Irish. Uh, Irish. Irish. That's unique. Good. That's good. I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. So, oh, same. Also fun ages. Same boat. So he's bringing kids up fishing with us. Yes. Damn nice. We'll teach us people. So good. Wait, backwards. 
www.dashgraphics.com for all your backwards graphics needs. Backwards graphics. You want to put a decal on a tree. Probably not the people to go to. Probably a poor choice, yeah. You want to go to keep I would recommend else. a knife. A knife on a tree. <laughs> so good. All right, thanks. Okay, we're running here. All right, Clay Groves, we are still at the New England Fishing in Outdoor Expo. I've been here for a day and a half. I'm exhausted. I have not stopped talking uh, in a day and a half. But I'm, I'm, I feel lucky because I have Brian, whatever your last name is, Volkernick? Yep. Brian Volkernick and Cody Rubner. Rubner. Yep. Rubner. And you guys are from University of Maine. Yep. But you're part of the Bass University? Yep, so is we're down right? here helping out with the Bass University. They invited us down for the second year. That's cool. Talk loud and right to that, okay? All right. So we're down here helping out with the Bass University for the second year. They've been great to us and hooking us up with a lot of different connections and helping us get into the competitive bass industry. And uh, it's been a lot of fun helping. That's out. fun. Because you guys, are you guys part? Of, like, do you guys fish competitively for bass right now? Yep. Yeah. Uh, right now we're a part of the FLW College in the Northern Division, and we go to New York, Chautauqua. And we've been to the Potomac River, and we're not yet part of Bass, but we're looking forward to it. Ah, oh, you guys are crushing it. Now, I, I interviewed uh, Brad Knight a couple of years ago who won the FLW. Um, first time I've ever talked to anyone who from the FLW, because it's a different world for me, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really in the nerdy world. You guys are kind of in the jockey world. You guys are actually considered a sport. Yeah. Like a real sport, like collegiate sport, right? Yeah, we, we like to think we're better than the D1 hockey program. So, you guys are going to letter in fishing? That's oh. so nerdy. I mean, that's <laughs> insane, right? Oh, yeah. We're committed to it. Yeah. I mean, what's your fight song? we got to come up with one. You need to make yeah. one up. It's all fishing. Get rid of this stupid bear. Black bears <laughs> don't even eat fish. It's the dumbest thing. So, <laughs> but you, man, you guys are local. I'm in Conway, New Hampshire. You guys are an hour away from okay. me. If you guys want to come fishing, I'll take you bass fishing through the ice. We caught a six-pounder the other day through the ice, and it was wonderful. Oh, yeah. On a jigging rod, two-pound test. I'll do it, that. All day, right? No problem. <laughs> but, um, so, what do you, what's your major in college? Uh, I'm, this, this I'm marine biology. Marine? I'm a senior marine biologist. Perfect. Nerdy as hell. Yeah. How about you? Wildlife ecology. Oh, my God. You guys are smarter than me, too. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I'm trying to be a fish biologist. Hopefully. I mean, I'd like to see where I end up in the fishing industry or marketing or something like that. I mean, maybe I'll be taking his money on the pro circuit one day or the other way around. Well, you, you know, know, and you can do both. And having this marine background, the study of biology background, gives you an edge over all these bass guys, right? Most of these guys, they don't know stuff. Right. You guys, not only do you know how to fish, but you know why the fish act the way they do, where they live, how they act with different water temperatures, what they're eating, how the forage, I mean, you know all this stuff that's way beyond what they know. Definitely. And I'm a teacher, so I'm always biased towards education guys. Um, now, on this podcast, we've got um, one of our, one of our uh, co correspondents has her doctorate's degree in fisheries biology and she's always sharing stories and you guys could be part of that you guys could like you learn something new you want to call the show tell us something cool definitely you know yeah. and and fish are fun for me because i like i like learning everything about fish i get super crazy about it so um part of bass university are you guys doing seminars here yep there's a there's a series of six pros that are down doing seminars we're helping them with the setup process and facilitate making sure everything goes well and good. listening and learning a couple things good and what pro is your favorite and who's a jerk? I'm excited for Mark Daniels Jr. to come tomorrow. Yeah, come tomorrow. Yeah. So make sure you introduce me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I never heard of him. Like, <laughs> I don't follow at that level, but who are you excited uh, about? Cliff Crochet, um, he seems pretty interesting to me. Good. I follow him on Instagram and I've, all of his... I've just started following stuff. some of these guys. I've been following, following Mike Iaconelli for a while, and now I'm starting to pick up all these, yeah. all these guys. Have you met him? Oh, yeah. Mike, Mike was here last year. He's crazy. He's yeah, I energy. thought he was going to be here this year, and I was, like, all excited to meet him. I, follow, I listen to his podcast, which, by the way, mine's beating him right now on iTunes, <laughs> so suck on that, Mike. But um, I was hoping to meet him and do some stuff with him. But, hey, guys, thanks for coming. How can people find out more about Bass University? Uh, well, the Bass University, you can find it on the, all those different social media outlets, Instagram and Facebook. And you can also find the University of Maine Fishing Club on there. We're UMaine Fishing mm -hmm. on Instagram. We're also www.umainefishingclub.com. Right. And, of course, all these links and more at fishnerds.com. And anytime you guys have to share stuff with us, we'll, we share it out to the world, okay? So Instagram, awesome. Twitter, whatever you have to be on, we're there. Sounds <laughs> okay? good. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm hanging out now with exhibitor... Harry Desmond from the Berkshire Rivers Fly Fishing Organization. Tell yeah. me, what is this organization? Yeah, so we're in our seventh year of business, 
And uh, what we do is we do fly fishing exclusive trips in Berkshire County, which is extremely Western Mass. And the reason I say extremely is because every time I say Western Mass, uh, people think Deerfield or Quabbin Reservoir. And which is not, that's not Western Mass. Not Western Mass to yeah. us, actually, Western Massachusetts people. So, yeah, we do that in Berkshire County, and we fish anywhere from southern Vermont all the way through Berkshire County, right down to northwest Connecticut. Well, good. Now, I used to um, work in that area of Massachusetts. Uh, I used to work for the state of Massachusetts driving an environmental educational van from state park to state park. So I've driven this, like, crazy van up, um, <laughs> is, it Mount, is it Mount Adams? Uh, uh, Greylock. Greylock, probably, yep. in, near Adams, Massachusetts. Correct. And I've been all over that part of the state. And, and people who haven't, it's amazing how many Boston area people have never been all the way west. Mm-hmm. Western Massachusetts. The nature there is gorgeous. Un- it's un- it's a different country. Yeah, it's absolutely. No one no one knows about it. Yeah, let's keep it that way. So uh, no, no, we're not going to tell anybody about well, it. Well, here they are. You need those people. <laughs> absolutely. Massachusetts, just like New Hampshire, are losing fishermen every year. They're just leaking out. They're stopping the fishing. They're not doing enough of it. And people like you, guides like you, people who bring people out, actually really is helpful to everyone. If someone buys a license, that fees those fees go to directly to pres- preserving the land and helping the fish species do well. So we need more people out there, especially if they're going out there to fish. And even better if they're hiring you. So are you a guide? I agree. Yep, so I, I run a guide service, and uh, basically what we do is we try to customize our trips to everybody's individual needs. Um, you know, if you're looking for fly fishing for trout, which is the obvious, the big one, but we do fly fishing for pike. We can do it for carp. Um, or even if you want to do fly fishing for half a day, and then you want to sp- switch over to spin fishing, we're we're not gonna uh, you know we're not gonna say you have to do one or the other. Our our big philosophy is make sure that uh, the bend is in the rod with a fish on it. And we don't care how you got it. That's that's so, how I fish too. I'm like, but what's working today? Let's do that. Right. Um, I don't think one's better than the other, and the fish don't care. The fish want to eat, the fish are gonna be fish. So yep. that's super good. And so seven years in. Seven years in, yeah. And um, I uh, I basically moved out west when I was 18. I lived and worked right in Yellowstone National Park and did that for eight years and I really picked up the fly fishing there where I grew up spin fishing out here. There, yeah. It was huge, yeah. huge. And uh, so I learned my love out there and then I came back here to the East Coast and actually learned how to fly fish. Right. And putting the time in makes a big difference and guiding people actually makes you better at it because you're thinking about technique all the time. You're always like correcting people and telling them what to do and so you're thinking about things in a different manner than you would when you're on your own. So yeah, absolutely. It's really about great. it's about learning personalities and how personalities learn and how you can uh, you know deliver your message to each personality and, and how the folks go about it. So. And it's highly variable, right? One person. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody's different. And uh, you know, I, I I got to do a lot of management uh, jobs in the years prior to being a guide, and you know, learning learning management style actually helped with how to uh, you know get through to certain folks. Of course. Now. Um, are you guide for a living full time year round? Or yep, we're finally. I, I kind of jumped off the cliff uh, two years ago. I'm going into my third year of full time guiding at this point. Uh, this year we did just under 100 trips. We did 98 trips, and you know it's growing every year almost by 60 percent. So it's year starting month. to get. And you that's know, how it works. Word of mouth, right? Word yes. of mouth, and uh, you know, like you were saying earlier in the show, the biggest thing is you know the conservation of it, the conservation of the sport, and getting folks out and, and learning that and teaching that, and uh, you know, it just it's a whole sustainable practice within the industry. And, Beautiful. Well, hey, congratulations. That's Harry Desmond from Berkshire River Fly Fishing, and you can find links at fishnerds.com. Harry, thanks for your time today. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. It's, we always shake hands at the end of interviews, <laughs> but no one can see us. Right. Strangest thing. Yeah. So, but anyway, I'm here with Jay from Bob Hog Gates. That's Bob, is spelled B-O-A-G. Yep. And you're the new owner of this company. Yes, I am. Yeah. So, welcome to the Fish Nerds. Yeah, that is awesome. Awesome to be here with you. It's, I like it. It's exciting. Now, tell us, what is Bog Hog Baits? What's your, what do you sell? Well, Bog Hog Baits, a lead-free jig company. Fast that. jigs. We were just talking about... Uh, just, just before you came on, I, I, I was talking to someone else, and we were talking about the importance of being lead-free. Yep. And even if you're in a state that's not lead-free yet, you should be going in that direction. As an ethical fisherman, you should be thinking Absolutely. in those terms. Because lead, we know, is bad everywhere. That's right. Not just in states where they're illegal. And for those of us who hate big government things, do the right thing so that someone else doesn't have to do it for you. Because the right thing is going lead-free. You will be checked. Way. 
people so, are getting checked and searched. And, and, but even if you're in a state that doesn't require, it's the right ethical fishing thing to do. Right. Lead is bad. So I love that you're lead free. You now become my new best friend because I've been pitching and talking about the importance of lead free for years and people push back on me all the time and I don't care. And by the way, fishermen love buying stuff and they're going to buy lead free stuff. Oh, Captain Sean, lead free jigs, really? <laughs> Those are cool. Do they make one that looks like a set of nuts? Uh, oh, thanks, Sean. Why do you want them? <laughs> we'll make them. Sean, you look pretty today. I look pretty every day. I know, you're a beautiful man. His beard, look, it's like he trims his beard. I do. You know, it's the beard conditioner. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Good to see you, Sean. We're interviewing. Really? Get the hell out of here. Bog, bog, base. But they spell bog wrong, which means it's very hard to say. It's spelled like a man. (laughs) Oh, is that how they spell things in Maine? Have you seen me spell? <laughs> I've seen you read. You've seen some of my emails. <laughs> the only reason that's halfway spelled right is because it spell checks. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Sean yeah. actually is a um, correspondent for our show. Okay. He does fishing vets in the news, the next segment we have on our show. Awesome. And he'll do little news segments about vets doing fishing things. That's us. awesome. And uh, our show just gave, we make a little bit of money on our show. We know sponsors yet. But we make a little bit of money through donations from our cast, our listeners give us money. Okay. And we just gave uh, 25% of our January funds to the um, PVA um, Paralyzed Vets uh, Association, the Bass Trail Guys. That's awesome. It's gave them, and we, we, we don't make profit, <laughs> but we're giving it away anyway. That's so, fantastic. So tell us more about Bob Hawk Base. Well, like I said, What's we're... What's your best stuff? The best stuff, our bread and butter is mainly skirted weedless bass jigs. Yeah. Uh, we do a couple different styles. Uh, we do some swim jigs. Uh, we have one jig called a barrel bug. It's a proprietary jig to us. We invented it. We make it. We own it. Yeah. Um, but really, what I like to say is we don't really do anything different than anybody else. I think we stand behind it more than anybody else. That's really important that you can do that. So what we do is I have a guarantee with my jigs. And what I'm going to say is because I make my jigs by hand and because I do it in my basement. You make your own stuff. Everything I do is made by hand in my that's, basement. That, that's, that's amazing too because a yeah. lot of companies are you know, rebranding and doing yeah. things, which is not a bad thing. It's, it's valid yeah. business. Everyone business is their own business. Yeah. But you do it yourself. That's a lot of work. Yeah, this company actually, as of last August, I was a customer of the brand. Yeah. And, and they were shutting down, right? They were shutting down, yeah. The brand was going to be shutting down and it had a loyal following from a lot of people. And when it came to a point where I'd heard about that, I happened to live within 10 miles of the existing owner, and I contact him, and we got talking, and I said, the brand can't go anywhere. I said, first of all, for myself, I said, I need to get some jigs. Where am I going to get them? Right, because you want I to thought of everybody else, guy. Yeah. and uh, I bought it. I just I took a loan out of my retirement, and I bought it, wow. and I went, uh, I believe in the brand enough to save it. It's amazing. And we're going to do whatever we can do to keep it going. That's remarkable. Now, um... This is a personal question, and I've been asking oh. most people this question because I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. I am a fishing guide. Okay. I own a podcast. I own a, I own a guide company. But I don't make a living in the fishing industry. Okay. Are you making a living in the fishing industry? No, I'm not. No, you're not. It's harder than you think, right? Yeah, I work a full-time 40-hour-a-week job, yeah. and then I work probably another 50 hours a week making jigs. Yep, all these part-time jobs yeah. become full-time jobs on the side that yeah. you don't make enough money to live on. But, man, yeah. is it a labor of love, right? Yeah, I, I, I would... I tell you what, if I was a millionaire, I'd do it for free. I'd give them away. Oh, if I was a millionaire, I'd do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right but it wouldn't be for free. You'd be paying to do it, right? Yeah, right. But yeah, I mean, it's so good. It, it, I always think about, like, if I was a billionaire, would I be president? Not a chance in hell. Yeah, no Not way. Not a chance. <laughs> I'd be having way more fun than that, you know? Yeah. So it's just crazy. Congratulations. Yeah. And so far, people can find you on Facebook, and we'll link everything at fishnerds.com for you. Yeah. And we will, we will have our... Uh, we will have our web page up and going within the month good we're uh we're just working on that we'll have it up and going soon well do me a favor when that launches i want you to launch through the fish nerds i want you to share oh, absolutely immediately and absolutely. We'll, we'll get it to our our people and they'll all know about it oh it's awesome we'll make a big deal about it and i and and as as a as a conservationist and a fisherman the lead free thing for me is primal number one yep. one of the most important things you can be doing for the industry and you're a superhero for doing it yeah. and I thank you for coming on the show it's Bog Hog Baits B-O-A-G Hog Baits and with New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo we're having a great time thank you Jason thank for coming you. on the show I appreciate it All right. awesome hanging out with Captain Sean Tibbet from MainTunaFishing.com Captain Sean is looking beautiful this morning with his baby blue shirt on and his bright 
bright eyes and bushy beard and all that stuff. You're so full of shit, it's coming out your ears. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Having a good show? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's busy. All the place is packed. What booth are you at today? Uh, Finnor. Finnor. And they yep. are a fishing wine company? They are real manufacturer. I wouldn't wine though. They are real manufacturer. They make the big gold ones. The awesome ones that only yes. only that uh, tuna fishermen can afford to buy. Well, I don't know about affording, but... <laughs> But they're super nice. I mean, I've, I've seen them. They're shiny. Yeah, you've played with them. I have. I've, no? I've played with your rods. You, you, yes, you have. <laughs> you sick bastard. Yeah. So what else have you seen around here that's been interesting for you? There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, you got all the real manufacturers are here. There's fishing apparel. There's rod companies, boats, you name it. Yeah, it's a, you know, these kind of expos are really fun for fish nerds to come to and kind of meet all kinds of cool people. Oh, yeah. Interesting people. And around here, I think it's busier because there's no ice fishing in Massachusetts this year because there's, there's no ice. There's no ice. So everyone's at these expos going, and they keep coming to me and going, I want to go ice fishing, and they can't do it. So That's all right. I think I know a few guys that will take them. We know some guys. New Hampshire's full of ice. So just so drive Maine. So is Maine. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. So... Who do we know? We got Tim Moore. You got Rich. Rich, Con- Rich from uh, Rich Yvonne from uh, Twin Maple. Maple Outdoors. Yep. You got me. Uh, I don't know about you though. I would I would hire me. I heard something about you in Silver Lake. Oh, I've been catching fish in Silver Lake. I don't know. Oh, how- you're catching them now. I got my first guided trip. You're gonna love this. Oh yeah. So you learned to do it on a guided trip. I told the kid who hired me I won't fish on Silver Lake and I won't fish for lake trout because I'm not good at those two things. And so he said I want to go to Silver Lake and I want to catch lake trout. Yeah. And I went okay. But you're not going to catch any fish. I uh, took him out, and in six hours, he caught 12 lake trout. Oh. Oh. I can't do that for myself. But when you, for a client, and he, and he tipped me a bottle of bullet bourbon. A bottle of bourbon? Yeah. Did you bring it? I drank it. It's oh, gone. Well, that's nice. It's gone. That's where this came from. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah you're filling back out. I am. I am. It's donuts and bourbon. Donuts and bourbon. <laughs> Delicious. So. Good. Well, hey, Sean, thanks for visiting. Yeah. Patrick from Kantuket River Canoe Company is hanging out with me. We are in the big room at the expo. What do you think of this place? It's uh, it's great. There are a lot of people here. It's crazy. You know why it's so busy? I'm going to tell you a secret. No ice in Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, so, same in New Hampshire, too. I'm in Conway. We are, I'm an ice fishing guide, and we are on the ice. I am on a foot of ice up where I am, so yeah. it's not bad. But here in Massachusetts, there's nothing. It's, you can go swimming if you want. You shouldn't. But you can go kayaking, couldn't you? That's true. I Actually, a couple of people said, gee, I could get a kayak right now. I'm and uh, go out this afternoon. And I was kayak, selling kayaks mainly what you do? We sell canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. Yeah, but fishing kayaks, uh, it's where it's at right now. The last couple of years have been blowing up. Now, I was fishing with Ryan Dubay this fall, and he had one of those feel-free kayaks that blew me away. I was in a regular canoe, and I couldn't keep up with him. Why, why are the fishing kayaks, like, what's special about modern fishing kayaks versus what they were even 10 years ago? Well, technology, like anything, is just getting, things are getting better. Uh, a lot of guys and gals, you know, they've got power boats, but they want to get into those smaller bodies of water. They're finding kayaks, you know, they can do that. And uh, the expense, you know, some of these uh, power boats are thousands of dollars. You can get into a kayak, uh, you know, for uh, under a thousand dollars or just over a thousand, and um, you can have lots of fun. And no gas required. And no gas. I mean, some of these have their pedal power, right? And some have trolling motors in them. They have electric motors. Insane. Pedal, paddle, so you can uh, you can have it all. Yeah, it's crazy cool. I, I went. I went out with another friend, and, and, you know, I got in the boat for the first time, and I grabbed the paddle, and he goes, why, why, why do you have a paddle? And I'm like, because we're in a kayak, and I could, my brain could not wrap, I never touched the paddle one time the whole trip. Oh, yeah, a lot of, you know, ha- having that hands-free option, mm-hmm. you're pedaling, or you've got power, you're fishing, shoreline fishing, makes it great. And what brands, kayaks, are you guys big on? You have Feel Free, it looks like, right? So we've got, so here at the show, we have Feel Free, mm-hmm. Wilderness Systems, Jackson, Perception, Old Town, and Native Watercraft. So you've got a pretty good selection, and you guys are Kentucky River Canoe Company out of where? Concord, New Hampshire. Concord, so like local New Hampshire guys, I'm a big fan of anything in New Hampshire, which is great. And what's your website? The website is KentuckyCanoe.com. Easy enough, right? And it open your round? Open. Uh, in the winter, we're open by appointment. By appointment. So they can find you online and say, hey, I oh. want to go buy a boat, and you'll show up and sell them. Boats. Oh, yeah. The fishing crowd, they're already they are already calling us. Well, they're itching for fishing. You're not kidding. They're not on the ice enough. So, cool. Right. Patrick, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Jack Houghton. Jack, you've been with us since we first started the podcast. Let's get you a little framed up here. Yeah, sure. Uh, and we're hanging out with, with Jack from Daddy McAlores at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo 
uh, and we're going to talk about some new baits you guys have. For those who don't know Daddy Mac Lures, they're a master's company, uh, nice local guys. Some of the, I think, community building, as far as that goes, one of the best companies that builds community. Um, yeah, definitely. Brings people into the industry and holds on to them tight. Yeah. And friends are friends for, for the whole time, which is really great. And fish nerds are all about building that community. Yeah. Um, and I actually like your baits, which makes it even better. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to try some under the ice this year. But can you tell us, first of all, what are your big sellers this year? Sure. Uh, we're still, you know, the same big sellers from last year. We have the 5-inch the yellow perch is on fire. Uh, uh, so 5-inch yellow yeah. perch right here. I've got some very good bass with the 5-inch yeah. yellow perch. And for those who are listening, it looks like a um, yellow perch. Yeah. But it's, it's a segmented bait with a Kevlar lining on there. Some nice hooks. That totally catches fish. Yeah. And then the, uh, the, the sunfish... Sunfish, this is a floating bait. Uh, we call this um, a bluegill. And, yeah. <laughs> You're so clever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this will float in the sink. Uh, as you reel it, it will go up to three feet. We've, uh, you know, we've been doing some uh, videos on Facebook. You may have seen them. The Get Ben TV guys did a great job. They do a good job, uh, It's man. unbelievable. I interviewed them yesterday, and the, the, the work they do, like, it, it's embarrassingly good. Like, I, just, yeah. I don't even want to make videos ever. Because yeah. They, 4.3 million views on our eel video. Unreal. And 400,000 yeah. views on the 5 inch in, in 4 days. And that, that sells the, show. the best thing for you, it sells oh, products, absolutely. right? Yeah, we have uh, the last two days we have orders from 35 out of 50 states. That's but, amazing. So maybe we know. can reach some more states today. Yes. You never well, let's know. hope. Yeah. All right, so what do we got here? What yep, so, I'll um, take what you do. Yep. I'll, I'll give it a That's the sunfish. It's uh, you know a best seller consistently. Uh, new baits. We have a nine-inch viper wake bait. It's a herring pattern. Now I eat fish that size. Yes, um, I catch largemouth bass that are that two pounds thing? on this. No kidding. You check out our Instagram. Feed. I've seen it. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you cast this. You, you big splash. You want to let it sit. You want to slowly reel it in and hold on. The the bass just absolutely love it. Just reel really slow. Yeah. Okay. Simple. Slow it down. Pause. Uh, and, and easy to fish. You won't lose it. It floats. You cast it off. You go get it. And, and by the way, for those of you guys who are an activist and don't like fishing, just uh, cut the hooks off them and fish them. That's how Dave's sister fishes. Hi, Dave. He's on the live feed. <laughs> uh, we love Dave. We do. We miss yeah. him. Yeah, so... Um, Since he died, he's been really hard I know. on me. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about this story is um, parents will actually have us take the hooks off. Yep. So the kids could play with them as a bath toy. Uh, really? Yep. That's an expensive yeah. bath toy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we go to some very ritzy places. That's amazing. Fishing shows. What else you got? The next thing is a... Yep. Take uh, that. Next thing is a 9-inch eel. This is like the 12-inch eel and the 6-inch eel, but it's 9 inches. This is 2.2 ounces. Um, it's more manageable than the, the 12-inch eel. Uh, we had a huge request. This is one of our biggest requests from Hold last a little bit year. Closer, get a better look at that. Show season last year. I, I got to tell you, so I use the smaller eel, which is six inches. Yep. Uh, and I vertical jig it under docks. Yes. And largemouth bass, slam it. Just on a, I never cast it. I just yep. jig it under the dock. Yep. So. It's great, uh, that vertical representation. We, we designed this bait as you drop it over. It will swim as it goes down. That's the whole, just like you drive in a, a live eel overboard. That's fantastic. Yep. And the what last, else you got going on? The last one is the lipless sunfish. This is a four-inch sunfish. Uh, one of the best swimming baits we have. We're very proud of this bait. It's a new bait this year. Um, it's been trying to keep up with its little brother, that, the one I showed earlier, the, the viper sunfish. But... Um, you know, I think it will. As more people fish this, I think this will be the, the go-to bait for those fishermen that love to fish sunfish. They are. And, and in New Hampshire, you can't use sunfish for bait, so this kind of gets us it's there in a nice way. I actually want to put this on a vertical jig and ice fish with it. Yes. And see what we can do. Uh, so that's Daddy Mac Lures. I just got wet. I, well, it's... You know, it's dripping. It's love. <laughs> so that's uh, Daddy Mac Lures here at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. You can find more information at daddymaclures.com. Yep. And, of course, uh, they're all over our Facebook feed all the time. Uh, and check them out. So, hey, thanks, Jack. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks, Clay. Bye, Dave. Sorry you died. <laughs> all right. ClayGrowsFishNerds.com. Hanging out with Dave Pickering from Rhode Island. Expert carp fisherman, expert striper fisherman, and all-around fish writer guy. How are you? Good. Yeah. So, hey, welcome to the Fish Nerds. I've actually been reading your writing for a long time. Oh, well, that's interesting. Which, which is why we write, right? Yeah, a lot of people have been reading it. Yeah, and, and I, get, I get a lot of good tips and tricks. But um, how long have you been writing? 
Uh, I joined the New England Outdoor Writers. I'm like in the professional writing group. Show off. I joined that in 1981, <laughs> wow. believe it or not. So How I've old were you in 81? Six. Six, me too. <laughs> so I've been doing that. But prior to that, I still fished a lot. So, But I, my writing actually began in 1981 for all the magazines and books. That's good. Now, do you make a full-time living as a writer? No, I don't. No, no. I'm a retired school teacher. Aren't we all? <laughs> so, so many writers and fishermen and who do this all teach on the side because it gives you the time right. to do that. And it's right. a good job. Teaching it is. is so much fun. What did it you teach? Uh, I taught fourth and fifth grade for 34 years in Massachusetts in the, Mass- in the Rentham Public Schools. And I actually enjoyed it, but I was given uh, like a retirement incentive. And I took it. What'd you do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what I do wrong? What I do right? I retired. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you're a fish writer. Are you just doing a presentation here at the expo? Uh, I'm actually doing three of them here in the next couple of days. What's the topics? Uh, the topic that I did to, just did was uh, keeper stripers and lodge blues from shore and boat. And I'm doing a show later on called uh, targeting lodge carp. Lodge carp. Yeah. yeah. Now I've targeted lodge carp with our friend here and uh, I've not done as well as you guys do but you know, New Hampshire carp fishing is a different game than in Rhode Island uh, what is your favorite species to target is carp your go to I think Jimi Hendrix is here uh, favorite species yeah well I'm actually a saltwater freshwater guy and in freshwater I like to target carp and I fish probably 300 mornings of the year for carp but then I like saltwater too and I fish for stripers blues and albies and I probably fish there 300 days. Some days I'm fishing both. Overlap. Yeah. You ever and use I, the same gear from one to the next? No. No. And I'm off I it, would. and I'm fishing uh, for the uh, stripers generally in the evening and nighttime. So I'm going almost every day. So, oh, so you have time, which is nice. That's why I do. I'm retired. I have all the time in it's the a world. Beautiful thing. And where can people read your work? Uh, well, I write for On the Water magazine mm-hmm. quite a bit. I write for the Fisherman magazine write it quite a bit. And I have two blogs that are very popular. One is called uh, ristripebass.blogspot.com. And the other one is called ricopfishing.blogspot.com. And both those blogs have approximately, at this point, 2.5 million hits. That's a lot of hits. Yeah. Now, no one's going to remember those blogs, so I'm going to put links at fishers.com. So yeah. people can go to fishers.com and they can click, click. Uh, they can click right through. They can read your writing Good. and uh, make you famous, sir. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for coming on the show. Okay, thanks a lot. Here with Dora Bright. What is your name? Greg Demello. Greg Demello. Clay Groves. Good to meet you. Clay, pleasure to meet you. What the heck is Dora Bright? We are Dora Bright, and we are marine LED lights. Um, we produce lights up to thirty-five thousand lumens. Um, with very low output. So 35,000 lumens. Translate that to standard measurement. Is that is that really bright or big freaking bright That's or hugely bigly bright? What is it? Extremely, extremely bright. If extremely you were to put one of these on a boat and you were to go out, you could see a mile marker from about a mile out. That's amazing. And and uh, so this is what your company is. And it's your first time at the expo. Been here before? This is the first time at the expo. Yeah. Um, we're based out of Jersey City. All of our lights are made in Long Island. Jersey City, New Jersey. Correct. Now I'm from New Jersey. Are you? And I'm going to tell you a story about Jersey City. I I went. I'm from Cape May, New Jersey. Okay. And we used to go to New York City. We cut school. We'd go to New York City for a day or two. You know, three-hour drive up. Sure. Coming out of the city once, I got lost in Jersey City. And I was driving down a one-way street called Fleet Street, and it ended at a cliff at the river. It was a one-way street. That's And then and then I, I was driving out of, of that, the wrong way on that one-way street, and I was down a different alley, and I got lost again. There was a gas station there, and I stopped to ask for directions, and a pack of wild dogs chased me back to my car. So that's my only impression of Jersey City. Interesting. Yeah, it was one very bad afternoon. Well, if you had a light with you, could have seen the cliff. It would have been perfect. And you could have blinded the dogs. It would have been, been a win-win. It would have been a total win. And where can people find information about Durbright? Um, DurbrightLights.com. We're big on social media. You can re- reach out to us directly at uh, Michael Morris, that is the owner's name, or Durbright Lights on Facebook. Um, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and our perfect. website, DurbrightLights.com. And, of course, we'll link up at Fishners.com once this show is out. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. Yep. Rob Lever from Deuce Rods. Uh, and where are you guys at? Oh, we're actually out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Lafayette, Louisiana. We're here at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. We're happy to be here. It is crazy busy today. It's very busy. I, uh, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm local to Massachusetts, even though I do work for a company out of Louisiana, and it's always good to see my home state 
and there's a lot of fish heads around here. They're they're crazy. That's when I one of the reasons I do the Fish Nerds podcast yep. is is I find fish is what brings all people together. There's not a culture in the world that has water near it. By the way, all have water near it. Yep. That doesn't fish. They all do. And it's one of those things that's a great equalizer. I'm always thinking, you know, like people are disagreeing about politics and whatever. Just go fishing. That's. Just, I spent, catch bass. I spent a lot of time on the water with a lot of different people. I'm over 200 days a year with the, with a different company that I work for. And I'll tell you, no matter where we are, we always have something in common. We're trying to catch a fish. That's right. So it, yeah, you might disagree on the best techniques, but that's a good disagreement to have, right? You well, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, that is actually one of the coolest parts about fishing is the fish do not discriminate. Uh, they don't so, care. They don't care. They, <laughs> they're purely trying to survive. Yeah. So whether I'm flipping or pitching to catch a fish, whether you're drop shotting or finesse fishing, just about catching You just use four words I don't know. <laughs> I, it's funny. I'm a fishing guy. I talk about fishing all the time, yeah. but I'm not. Like, I don't watch, like, the Bassmaster Classics. Mm-hmm. You know, Go Fish Dan was here telling me all the big elite big fishing names. I haven't heard one of the names in my life. <laughs> and and it's not because I don't care. It's just because I, I don't follow that kind of fishing. But it's still fishing. I'd be happy to fish with any of those guys. Well, you actually bring up another cool thing about the fishing industry. The names don't matter in the fishing industry. It's... Purely, there are a million different ways to fish. There's a million different places to fish, and it's fun. That's the best part about fishing. It's, it is fun to do. It's fun. You know, I was trying to explain to someone. Someone asked me, Clay, why do you fish? And I struggle with that answer. <laughs> like, because it, it, fun is the only thing I can think of, but I can't actually think of why is, it doesn't make any sense. Like, That's, if you've never done it or if you don't do it, it's hard to express it. But that, something about that feeling, it's emotional, it's, it's internal, it's in your body someplace, and it makes you want to do it. Now, you're a rod company. I am. Yep. I, I I work a lot of different facets, but I am here with with the rod company. With, with Deuce. Deuce Rod. Yep. Company. It's Deuce Fishing Rods. What's the website? It's uh, DeuceRods.com. Mm-hmm. And you've been with them how long? Uh, I'm going into my second year with Deuce. I've worked in the rod industry for a little bit, but uh, Deuce and I got together about a year and a half ago. And you were telling me earlier it's big redfish rod. It is a big and, redfish. And I yeah. the only time I ever caught redfish was in Lafitte, Louisiana. Oh, you are speaking my language now. Um, I went yeah. down. T- to New Orleans with my wife a couple of years ago, yep. and I emailed uh, every fishing guide I could find down there and said, who wants to take a fish nerd fishing? <laughs> and I got taken out with New Orleans style fishing charters, took me fishing. Yep. And uh, I'd never been redfish fishing before, and we were doing some, using, I've never fished with a baitcaster before, <laughs> and he handed me a baitcasting rod, and I have never, I've seen him, but I've never used one, and he was disappointed in me. When I took a spin, spinning rod and put a piece of shrimp on it. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it, it's funny because I'm from the Northeast, so obviously I, I cut my teeth in the fishing world, striper fishing right. and blue fishing. And when you were kids, up code. Oh, you know, yeah. So for me, a spinning rod was always where it was at. And then once I got big into the freshwater world and working actually in the industry and then starting other businesses, it was I'd travel the country. They thought I was odd when I'd pull out a spinning rod. Right. And so that's actually one of the things I've done with Deuce is before Deuce was a redfish line, speckled trout, all bait casters. And I blew all of the, because we have a million guides in the New Orleans area, in Louisiana. And the second I started pulling out spinning rods, they kept calling me. Did they, did they call you a Guggen? No, he was very <laughs> nice to me. They're, you know, people who are native to Lafitte, they are gentlemen. Yeah. They were, yep. It was Mr. Clay, yes. Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay. Not once did he ever put me down. He actually, he had, <laughs> he had a pile of spin, spinning rods on the boat. But he, was, he was very anal about them, too. He would take the handles off every night. Yep. Put them in a pile and store all his rods with no handles on them. That way the rods wouldn't get tangled. And He's smart. He, maybe he was. Yeah. But, yep. yeah, no, he did not call me a Goog, and that feels like a very New England thing to call someone. Well, it, it, yeah. it's funny because I, 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 they, they, they were laughing at me at my first show. I, I always I do a bunch of shows in Louisiana, and they... Oh, well, he's selling Guggen rods. Guggen rods. I actually thought it, I actually thought it was a good term, and then somebody came over, and I was like, "Hey, I have Guggen rods on sale," and then <laughs> I, their eyes dropped. You know, it almost you almost could own it. You know, like just oh, yeah, it's Guggen rod company. Hey, if, 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 if I if thing. I have Guggens that buy our rods, we're actually obviously doing pretty good. You know, just like the fish don't care what you're holding. Yeah. You know, I don't care who gives me money. That's like that's <laughs> it is it is uh that is the beauty of the fish because even even equipment wise, I'm 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 a junkie. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like I'm, we all are. I am. I have a serious problem, and I love walking around these shows, especially this show, because there's so many different companies, and even other rod companies. I'm the first guy. I'll pull up there and I'll start playing with their rods and playing what they have. And man, I, I love the fishing world. I, I can't even begin to tell you. It's it's a lot of fun, and we meet cool people. And I'm super happy to meet you. We gotta wrap this up because I got like 30 people who awesome. want to be on this show, and awesome. I can't do it all big long. But cool. Thanks for coming on. Say your website again. It's uh, DeuceRods.com. DeuceRods.com. And we'll put a link at FishNurse.com to everything at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. And that way you can find all the people we've been talking to. 
Um, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay, my mic is on and hot. Ben from EuroTackle, welcome to the Fishers. I, I, we're at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. It's been so busy. You must be selling a ton of stuff. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And even if we have no ice, I'm still selling a bunch of uh, ice fishing stuff. You know why? Because in New Hampshire, where I live, we have lots of ice. Yeah, in Maine too, and there is some people from Maine of what I heard. Yeah, I gotta tell you, so when I first found you guys at the Rockingham Expo, you were selling these mummy worms, right? That's right. I have been using them. I haven't run out yet. Uh, and I've been catching every species on them. Bass eat them, pickerel eat them, lake trout eat them, yellow perch eat them. Everybody loves them. And they're just mummified wax ones, right? In all different colors? That's what it is. And they come in 12 colors. And I remember you posting a bunch of pictures of different species. Yeah. And thank you very much. I'm sure because of me, you're rich now. Is that right? Sorry? Millionaire now because of me? <laughs> Almost. You're welcome. <laughs> But anyway, so that's Eurotackle, Eurotackle.net. Besides the mummified wax worms, which are my favorite things you guys sell, tell me about some of the other stuff. What's innovative? What's the big, exciting thing? The big, exciting thing this year? Yeah, besides you. We're the big step um, of the mummy worm on the ice fishing market. Yep. We are working with most of the stores that sell ice fishing t- stuff in the whole north part of the country. That's Some amazing. big box stores, too. So... It allowed us to invest in some other ice fishing stuff, like tungsten ice jigs, some... Uh, oh, those are great looking jigs, too. Yeah, I'm going to come back and pick some up. Metal jig. And the most interesting thing, according to me, are the microfina soft plastics. Oh, uh, these are great looking. And so if you, if you like ice fishing, or even summertime fishing with plastics... Yeah, yeah, that's for panfish, trout, everything, yeah. Yeah, and those are great looking. I'm a big, small angler. I like using small baits. And we do. Are, these are fantastic. That's what we so. do in Europe. So I really try to follow the the European uh, yeah. trends and... Micro finesse, you said, and those are great looking. I can imagine how many fish must just scoop those things right up. Yeah, I'm receiving great pictures from all over the, the country. With that's, them. that's great. And for people who hate uh, using bait, it's a nice alternative, and I can't wait to get some of those on the ice. I'm going to pick some up tomorrow from you. No problem. And we'll, we'll, we'll share some more photos with you. But hey, congratulations. Thank you. You've been in the business how many years now? Just one? A year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. You're starting to catch on. I've seen your stuff in different tackle shops. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And what are you doing besides your tackle? Nothing. That's it. This is Nothing. your job. Yeah, we are in over t- a thousand stores now, so wow. I really... It takes time to take care of all of them. Congratulations. And we're in Canada, too. The Canada. Canada. Canadian market. Yeah. Okay, but that, that's amazing. Congratulations, Thank Ben. You. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see and, you, too. And uh, I'm hoping I'll see you going on every year in the future. And I hope so. It's, you're killing it. You're doing Thank really you. well. People are talking about you, and it's great. And you got a fabulous accent. Don't those kids make fun of you I don't know much. about that. <laughs> uh, how am I doing? You're doing great. So, Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you very much. We are but we are recording right now. Oh, we're live. Yes, Hello. Show. I'm Clay from Fish Nerds. You are. I'm Josh. Big Z. Big Z. Butch. Butch. Jim. Jim. Filthy owner, man. Filthy owner. I've been following you guys. You guys are crushing it out there. We're doing all right. So you guys working with line cutters now? And yeah. Right here. The, is that the custom ring? Custom. Yep. Wow. Mine's pink. But I'm not wearing hey, it. Hey, it's all about the pink. <laughs> I'm not wearing it right now. Let's so, go. so we're recording right now. I'm doing a segment for the New England Fishing Outdoor Expo. Yep. I want to hear your pitch. What is Filthy Anglers? Why should we care about you guys? Get it every- filthy Anglers is what you want it to be. There is no true definition of Filthy Anglers. Genuine people, good people, supporting one another. Boom. Boom. Nailed it. And people can find you guys www.filthyanglers.com, Instagram Filthy Anglers, or Facebook Filthy Anglers. Filthy Anglers, of course. We always share your stuff on the Yeah, I appreciate media, it. So I really appreciate cool. it. And, nice uh, meeting you. Yeah, you guys selling some gear and stuff? We're doing all right today. Yeah. This is a good show. We do well here. We get a good yeah. following. This is my first year coming to the show. Yeah? So, oh, you'll enjoy it. It's good. Enjoy it for sure. I want to talk to John at Garmin because this year I started using, I started being a fishing guy. And I have the Garmin Striker 4, which is like the bottom of the barrel Garmin, right? That's the the entry level. We don't say bottom of the barrel. It's the entry level Garmin, but it, uh, it for it's like 110 bucks. I think I got it for on Amazon or something. And it in the summer on my kayak worked great. And I brought it on the ice this year. I bought the ice fishing transducer, and I used it next to some of the other fishing flashers that cost 500 dollars, and it worked as good as any other flasher on the ice. And it has the graph function, which I fell in love with for ice fishing. 
So you, you work for Garmin? I do. My name's John. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. And, and, and you sell these things all day long. Tell me about Garmin, history with Garmin, a little bit about their philosophy on fish finders. Well, our philosophy is it's, it's important that we create something that's easy to use mm -hmm. because in the end, you're out there to go fishing or go boating, not because you want to fiddle-faddle around with an owner's manual, for example. Right, which I never have read. It's, that's the important part right there. Yep. And the striker line that you're talking about is actually a very value-placed product. It's a you great a product. Yeah, I mean, for, I mean for, for the price point, I can't imagine... And I hate to, I'm not a salesperson with Garmin. I'm just in love with it right now because I've been using it every day. I can't imagine a better unit for that price point. But it makes me want to now try bigger units. You know? Oh, sure. No, I get it. Our, our customers are super passionate about our products because they use them and it makes so much sense. It works. It, it does what it's supposed to and what you told me it was going to. The Strike is a great line. It's it's a full-on Sherp sonar. It's the same sonar that we put in our Echo Maps and our, our large units. It uses multiple frequencies to give you really, really good target separation and definition uh, from the bottom or from other fish. And the, you know, the one you're talking about, the Striker 4, not only does the Striker series have a great fish finder in it, you can also get them with the down view, uh, 3D type bottom imaging, but it also has a GPS receiver. So while you're navigating... So I haven't used it. Yeah, no, so you know, if you're on a spot and you're marking a nice piece of structure, you can save and mark a waypoint. It's not a chart plot, there's no charts in there, but you're also not paying for it. That's, you get a good value out of it, but you can come back two years later and put yourself right back on that brush pile. That's perfect. That's perfect. And, and they're really cool looking too, which I like. It's, it baffles me in 2016 that people are still bringing devices that spin on the oh, flashers? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you know. But it works. There are a lot of people that are, are used to a certain way of looking at something, and we still, the, the Striker line still offers that flasher which, option. Which I don't understand. Right? I don't understand why we're looking at a vertical column as a circle if we don't have to. Right. And, and I was trying to, I was with a client and as a guide, and I was trying to explain it to him. He's like, well, why, if it's, it's on a computer screen, why is it circular? And I said, tradition. Like, you're, you're absolutely like fishermen right. don't change easy, so you've got to give them circles because that's what they're used to. Is that all it is? It, you know, it's important to give the customer what they want. Yep. Well, they won't they won't buy the product or it's not useful to them. And, you know, as a company, we, we fully realize it's important to uh, the, the customers what drives our product. Uh, many right. of the features that show up in our products um, are driven by the customer, and that's that's important to us. Yeah, and they're, they're a good product. They look great. And I, and I thank you for your time. People can buy this where? Um, you know what? Uh, all the major retailers, um, through Cabela's, mm -hmm. Bass Pro, through independent dealers as well. So independent boat dealers can buy them through the distribution. Perfect. Yeah, so everywhere you buy fish finders, yep. Garmin's already there, and you know, I got mine on Amazon, but it's still all buying Garmin. It's totally great. Hey, glad to meet you, and, um, and thank, and thank you, Garmin, for putting together a product I can afford to get out of the ice coast. So Fantastic. No problem. Here. All right, Clay Groves, fishnerds.com, hanging out with Get Bent TV. We're at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. It's crazy busy here today. It is. Yeah, guys, thanks for coming. Say your names. Uh, I am Anthony. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm John. Hi. Well, hey, actually, you don't need to talk so close. This is a shotgun mic. <laughs> okay. You can, just like you, you use these all the time. Yes. You yes, can be have, 25 yeah. feet away. It's gotcha. just fine. This is cool. A, this is, right. I'm a pro. Cool. You're a pro. Right. Okay, I'm so gonna, I'm going to so, come, so come back. Up. Up. Uh, uh, I'm Tone Lope. Uh -huh. Get Ben TV. I'm Tone the big Lope. guy. Yeah. I eat a Funky lot of the, I eat John's that's lunch it. when we go fishing. So Excellent. That's Excellent. You guys have Fun been. Guy. So for those who aren't following Get Bent TV, get onto their YouTube channel. Yes. yes. And follow Get Bent TV. The cinematography you guys do, like, like I'm not sure we'd be friends if you weren't making such pretty pictures because, because stuff you guys put out so over the internet. I, I was telling you guys off there, and I'm not joking. It makes my eyes water. It's so beautiful, and. It, I, I don't like your music, you. but, <laughs> but, the, but visually speaking, it's stunning work. Now, I met you guys, la I've known you about you for more than last year, but last year we all went ice fishing together, yep. Tim Moore, and yep. you guys put together a great um, episode for Tim Moore Outdoors, um, and we had a good time. And then I'm watching your, your ice fishing videos this year have been just as good. Daddy Mac used you guys. Yep. Did, he, did, he, did he pay you? Yes, he did. Excellent, yeah, did, excellent. Yeah, 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 Jackson. Jack's a great guy. Daddy yeah. McAlew is a great dude. One of our one of our very good friends. Yeah, and now one of your sponsors, apparently. Now one of our sponsors, um, too. The yeah. video you guys made with those Vipers. So if you guys haven't seen it, go on YouTube. Go to Get Bent TV or fishnerds.com. We'll put a link on there. And you can watch the video. And what these guys did was 
They casted a viper lure, which is a segmented lure, into water. They got it splashing down in slow motion through the water and then swimming underwater. Unbelievable. I could stare at that all day. Did you catch any fish while you were doing that? Maybe. Yeah, I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah, right? you have to, yeah, have to, to stay tuned. Out. Yeah, so stay tuned and see. But anyway, Get Bent TV. Um, tell me, this is not your full-time job yet. No, no. Yeah, is not it even, with hopes? No. This is, is it close? Uh, we're, we're making progress, you know. Um, yeah. Started off as a hobby between Tony and I, and it just kind of progressed in, into this thing, and now we're just snowballing, and we're just trying to, trying to stay ahead of it, and, you know. Yeah, just, and you're probably suffering from the same problem I suffer with. I, I make this podcast as a, as a part-time thing, and, uh, and, and having to mix it and keep up with social media and do right. all that while, job. while doing the jobs that pay your bills, right? Right. So when you find That's people... Perfect. You know, like who can support you guys financially, you, you should take their money. Oh, absolutely, can, right? absolutely. That and, is the name of the game. I and guess, people man. can hire you to, to do work for them? Oh, yeah. How does, yep. one, how does one hire you? Uh, you can contact us. Uh, our email is getbenttv at gmail.com. I was going to uh, say getbenttv at getbenttv. Getbenttv yeah. at getbenttv.com. So, yeah, you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook. DM, so, DM. DM means direct message. It's yeah. not like a rapper thing. It's Drop it in the DM. Yeah. Drop it goes it down in there, you know. Yeah. It goes down in the DM. In the DM. And you guys have been doing some ice fishing this year. While we while we can while we have the ice, we you haven't know? had much here. No. Where are you guys from? No, uh, we're both out of uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Worcester, so Mass. local boys. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So this is close to home for you. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. Oh, yeah. that's super cool. Now I'm up in North Conway, and we've got a foot of ice up there. No kidding. And oh, I just man. started. Uh, I'm a guide now. I don't know if you saw that, but I just opened up my own guide service. Okay. I did a series nice. on on how to become a fishing guide, and and in order to do the series properly, I thought I better become a guide. And so I did the Good whole... Way. And you blogged that whole thing, the, the whole thing. process. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Check awesome. this guy out. So, so awesome. way cool. I got to talk to this guy. Yeah. You guys talk much yourselves, man. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, Tone. Thank you very much. Tone, what is your favorite type of pizza? Uh, I like the Mexican pizza. Why? Because you get a bit of the crunchy from the chips, but you still get all of your protein source from your... Okay, gotcha. You know, ground beef, right. cheese. Yep. You know, I'm a hot guy, so jalapenos are essential. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so. Yeah. The, the wife doesn't appreciate that too ask, much that later on, <laughs> but um, that's my next question. Because she's a Hawaiian pizza girl, so she's she likes she, the ham and, she, the, and the bacon. It's all about the sweet and salty. So shout out to Tiana Ta. What up, loves what up the, T? Loves the pineapple, loves the ham combination. You know what? I go straight southern, Mexican. Let's do it. No need to build that wall because I like <laughs> tacos. Can we still get tacos, you think? Listen. Hopefully. I'll, Just because there's a wall doesn't mean we can't get tacos, right? As long as the guacamole trade doesn't get messed up, bro, right. I am 100... Right. Avocado is a superfood, dude. Yes, you cannot mess with the avocado trade in the country. No, right now, no, okay? no. You want to, you want to, you want to uh, protest. You start banning avocado sales, uh, then you're going to see me out there. I mean, if you're having a bad day anywhere, guacamole fixes that in a second. In a jiffy. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I'm saying. I'm 100 percent with that too. Yeah. So, you, know how to, you know how to test an avocado to make see if it's ripe? I do not. I do not, John. So when you get an avocado, it comes really like they're really hard at first, and you got to wait for them to soften. You got to soften them up. How do you soften them up? You roll them in a paper towel, and you leave them. That is a Guatemalan trick. Shout out to my boy Jose. Fact checkers out there, let's let's check John out. Do you okay? anybody anybody comment or anything yet? Oh yeah. But we got some fact checkers out there. They're gonna check John's theory. I think you put it in the refrigerator, right? I think you soften it by putting it in the refrigerator. Okay, I you think say you wrap it in a paper towel. towel. Yeah, this is a homemade trick. Everybody at home is gonna look that up. All right, they're gonna comment, and, and then, fish nerds are gonna let us know what the true answer is. Okay, how All to right? ripen? How to ripen? Oh, guac- yeah, cool. take the table. So I don't know what you were talking about. I heard things about walls and guacamole. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm afraid of racism in here, but I, I hope you oh. didn't go in that direction. Oh, no, 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 guacamole no, no, is no, completely said, neutral. We, 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 guacamole is American. Really, no, it's. We only uh, hope that if, if there was a wall, we would still be able to get the guacamole. Oh, that yeah, is yeah. all we were concerned That's all we care about. about. Well, here's the trick is the best avocados are from the Dominican Republic. Oh, so, whoa, I don't know. Ooh. So that could be. Because I used to work at a school in Lawrence, Massachusetts. I was a teacher there. Okay. And all my kids there were Dominican. And the little bodega across the street sold avocates. Avocates. Okay. And they were... The big ones or the little ones? The really big ones. The really big oh. ones. Because there's, there's an argument that, like, the smaller ones are a little... Uh, so I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't need to compensate. So <laughs> I just take them as they come. 
So, the, but the big ones, because with guacamole, it's a volume game. Yes. Guacamole is always good. Yes. So yes. more guacamole is more better. Better. More yeah. better. 100%. So that's why the that's why they're better from the DR. Bigger. Because bigger with guacamole is better. Always. Because otherwise you have to buy three out of them. Right. And you got to cut them. You got to cut them. And then yeah, it's hard to get that seed. There's a big seed uh, in there. You know what really pisses me off? Oh, what? When you take that seed and you put the toothpicks in it and you put it on the jar and you wait three months and it gets moldy. Oh, gross. I get damn. so mad. I'm like... You know, that's the only time, a, the only yeah. time I think we need a wall is where my avocado <laughs> seeds won't grow. I'm, like, you know avocado I'm seeds. building an avocado wall. That's it. No more. Oh, yeah. No more moldy so, seeds. All right. We're going to wrap back into, into Get Bent. All right. I gotta, yeah. I'm going to edit this. Um, plans for the future of Get Bent TV. Where do you see yourself in three months, a year? So we're in the ten? process of um, training ourselves for um, the video triathlon. We're in search of a unicorn. Okay, so when we find the unicorn, we're gonna ride her, mm-hmm. and then I'm, all I'm of our dream, <laughs> and then all of our dreams are gonna I'm come a, true. I'm coming. So after we find, so as soon as we find the unicorn, we're just gonna keep cranking out fishing videos, as many areas as we can fish, as many spots as we can fish. Um, we're always up for different species. You know, we're not we don't we're not one species angler. Multi, mul- good. It's it's good to spread it out. Um, so we're just gonna keep doing doing what what we've been doing, and just you know keep. Pushing out some some good content. That's that's perfect, and that's what you gotta do. And now you guys must be starting to get invited. You're like like no one, people aren't gonna pay you all the time, but people are gonna invite you to fish with them all the time. Are you getting yes. a lot of good invites? Uh, we do I would actually. Say, uh, some some good, some kind of weird, but most, but some de- definitely some uh, good ones. Yeah. Now, ice fishing, ones. traps or jigging? Both. Both. I love traps. You gotta pick a side. We're yeah, I'm all, traps. I'm want. traps. Just to, just for the fact that I like to scan the ice. And when I see a flag up, it, it makes it makes my heart skip a beat. I'm a little ADD, you know what I mean. So my mind's a little bit everywhere. I'm a jigger. Yeah, I'm a jigger. I'm a jigger. Too. All right. I, am. I just I like to run around to the holes, and, and, and there we're gonna go see another one. Perfect. So. All right. So get Bent TV on the YouTube. Check us out on YouTube, Instagram. Is, yeah, uh, Instagram on the everywhere, and go to fishers.com. I'll put some videos. I'll put a page up, a bunch of your videos I like on there. Yeah. And awesome. I'll link it back thanks to you guys. All right. Thanks, thanks guys. A lot. Our, Thank uh, you very much. Oh, you just had more stuff. Well, we you guys just never had, stopped talking. Tell them about the RC boat video on YouTube. Just check out our, we got a bunch of new content, a lot of fun stuff. Our, yeah. RC boat, fishing with RC boat, new ice fishing video, yeah. rocket rod it, video. It, look, it, anytime, it, anytime you guys have anything to share, I won't look at it as spamming on the Fish Nerds wall. Post it, I'll share it. I always bump it out. Thank you very much. I don't because we need to build do. these communities, okay? Absolutely, Thanks. absolutely. Thank All you right, very much Captain for having Sean's us on coming. Today. Shut up. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Clay Gross, FishNerds.com. We're hanging out at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. It's rowdy, man. It is so noisy in here. But I'm so excited because I'm sitting here relaxing, and then two people who I've been love seeing every year walk in. Fish Nerds culinary correspondent Hugo Medeiros is here, and Yellow Man, whose real name I don't know, <laughs> is you. Daniel. Daniel. What's your last name? Smith. 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 Oh, thank you, Hugo. Uh, yeah, step one step closer, right here. All right. Just so we can pick it up. Okay. So first of all, all right, tell us about. You went to Alaska? Yes. All right. Let's so, hear that story. I spent six months up in Alaska. Right. I was working at a fishing lodge. Now, like, so doing what at the lodge? So my job was to be the dock boy. So I was fueling boats, unloading catch from the boats for the clients, teaching the clients how to operate boats if they didn't know how, mm-hmm. teaching them about the local waterways and what species were in the local waterways. Okay, and so what species are in the local waterways? Uh, so we had uh, four different types of salmon that came through, uh, the coho, the kings, the reds, and then oh, the no. dog chum salmon. I know, Hugo's drooling, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Hugo. <laughs> They're not cheering for you. Yeah, it's not I know, you. I know. We had uh, another trout relative, which in freshwater would be considered the Arctic char, but in saltwater it's called the Dolly Barden. Really? Yeah, they were looked at kind of That's as That's on my captive. bucket list fish, by the way, is Arctic char. There you go. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what you do. Go to Alaska. Petersburg, Alaska has them. That's amazing. So, all right. So now you're back. Yes. And you brought some fish back with you. Yes. What did you bring back? So I brought. Wait. And you brought fish back and you gave them to this seagull. Yeah. He eats. Hugo eats anything. I know. You could just lie to him and tell him it's something he'll eat. It. Yeah, you can. Well, when you bring back 400 pounds of fish, it's kind of hard. That was to a eat big suitcase. I know. That's what I think. Did you check it? Funny. <laughs> did you check it? I travel with yeah. fish. Yeah, I checked the 400 pounds of fish. Now, Alaskan Air actually is really cool. They have these insulated fish boxes that they uh, they go up to 50 pounds each. 
So uh, you can put 50 pounds of fish in each one of these boxes. So I ended up bringing four, four boxes home when my girlfriend came home in August. Don't then, brag that you got a girlfriend. No oh, one's okay. impressed. Come hey, on. Listen, listen. She fishes, <laughs> My too. girlfriend lives in Canada. I promise. No, She's no. She lives in Connecticut. See? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, <laughs> so I had, I sent her home with four boxes, and then I brought another five home. Mm -hmm. So, I also got some crab there, too, which everybody what thinks. What kind of crab? Dungeness. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. I love it. it. It's really good. It's really good Dungeness crab. It's, it's fantastic. You can tell he spent time out there because the rest of us have called him Dungeness and he goes, I'm Dungeness. <laughs> so, all right, so you brought all this stuff back. Now Hugo's going to cook. How much did you bring to Hugo? Uh, well, I have probably about two pounds of just regular halibut going to Hugo. I have okay, four pounds of halibut cheeks. Halibut, halibut cheeks. I'm making a list of jobs for you to do. Yep. And, and then halibut cheeks. And then there's probably about two to three pounds of uh, coho salmon. Coho, delicious. Yeah. That's fantastic. And now, do you already know how you're going to use all this stuff? I'm no, I'm racking my brain. I don't have any idea yet. The one thing that drove me nuts that he said is smoked halibut cheeks. So the last segment I recorded that we'll be posting was the cod cheeks. Mm -hmm. And then he tells me he's got smoked halibut cheeks from Alaska. That's you know, people who don't know, fish cheeks are one of the, it's like the tenderloin cut of a fish. Walleye cheeks in New Hampshire are great. I've eaten fall fish cheeks, fantastic. Um, yellow perch cheeks, they're little, but they're good. It's worth the time. When you see when you get a big fish, take that head. And there's meat in there, and it's delicious. I've seen you take all kinds of meat out of fish mm -hmm. head. Right? Tell me about that. You've got a fish head. Well, you know, it's funny. A uh, local fish uh, vendor that I go through where I live, you know, he's in Sturbridge, uh, excellent place, you know, which is tough to find in uh, Western Mass. He's got beautiful fish, and he tells me, he's an Italian guy off the boat, he tells me, he's like, Hugo, I can get codfish heads for you. So people after, throw them away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after I did the codfish cheeks and tongues the other day, I said, Sebastiano, you can really get the codfish heads for me. And you said free, right? He goes, yeah. And I well, and they still got the cheeks? No, those are gone. I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> it's like, these people aren't stupid. That's they right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. spoon those cheeks me. out. <laughs> they cook them like scallops. They're fantastic. That's they really are. cool. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. When I was a kid, um, as a kid, back to graduate high school, my family moved to Alaska and left me in New Jersey. I didn't want to finish high school somewhere else, so I stayed in New Jersey, right? My dad was the commanding officer of the land station in Juneau, Alaska, right? So one day, I'm at work, and this guy comes in wearing a helicopter pilot's uniform with two big giant coolers of halibut that was caught the day before in Alaska with my dad. And my dad, as commanding officer, said, you guys are going to Cape May? Take him with you. And they're flown from there to the Coast Guard base in Cape May, and then a helicopter pilot drove into my, to my work where I worked. Um, and I was 18. What a waste of food on an 18-year-old kid who doesn't know how to cook fish. I mean, I, so I worked at a deli at the time. My boss, we had a big fish fry. We did a big giant fry. It was delicious. But there's so much more we could have done with that fish. Now at 40-something, Please, somebody bring me a giant cooler of halibut. Holy smokes, man, what a good person you are. And it, if, uh, Dan, Daniel, you're going to be in the area, maybe we can record together as we cook it. Definitely. If you're in Spencer, I'm down the road. Definitely. Definitely. You're staying where uh, Dan Kenny, who runs the show, is, uh, lives. I don't know where that and is. It, uh, Spencer <laughs> needs 20 minutes from my house. Oh, that's perfect. So we'll have to we'll do a segment at my Definitely. house. We'll cook that stuff. You Definitely. should. Sounds we look good. forward to that. All yeah. right. So we got we got to break out here. we got a lot going on today. But uh, Yellow Man, yeah, thank it's you. Good seeing you. And we'll share pictures and recipes on Facebook and all that place. Hugo, I'm always so happy to, to see you in person. You too, brother. I get, I, I'm not exaggerating <laughs> to, to the audience. I get starstruck. I almost <laughs> cried when Hugo walked in. So <laughs> I got really, like, I'm, I, look at look. I'm 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 like so happy. You're killing me. So, all right, fishnerds.com. Thanks. I've been talking all day, but I'm so happy because. When we come to these expos, we bump into people who are family. And Jay's Custom Rods is family to the first Nerds. We've known you guys since you started. You've known us since we started. Welcome to the show. Jace, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, show's, show is uh, there's a lot of people running around here. Um, everything's good. 
Um, I think I think this show's really really great this year compared to what it you know it's it's been it had a tough pass. So um, it's really nice to see that it's actually working out now, and uh, all the people that were committed with it. Um, it's working out for everybody. It's working out. And you guys, your booth is beautiful. It's one of the biggest in the show these two, isn't it? Yeah, we, we kind of pulled out all the stops starting last year. Um, we wanted to make ourselves stand out from, you know, some of the other booths. So uh, last year we went big and um, we, we got a nice backdrop and some other stuff. And, and so this year we went even bigger. And so we've, we've put together a pretty nice, clean booth and... Uh, and it's working out for us. And you even brought your own carpet. That's insane. Yeah, That's insane. yeah. The carpet's nice. Uh, more, more than just it looks cool, but uh, it's nice to stand on when you're standing all day. So, right. Well, let's talk a little about your custom rods. Okay. okay. You've been at this for a few years. Five years. Yeah, uh, four, four and a half. Four and a so. half. Yeah, going on five years. Uh, lots of people are using your rods. I see, like famous fishing anglers now using your rods. What do you got on your post deck? Uh, well, uh, one, of, one of our founding uh, pro staff, uh, Amy J, is still on there. Um, Dave, David Riley, he's uh, from Rhode Island Bass. Uh, Kevin Miller, um, he's a New Hampshire bass angler. Um, and Dwayne Turner, she's a Maine uh, bass angler. So you're kind of covering a lot of people with that. And when you're doing the custom rods, tell me, like, why would... If you're trying to like talk to me about custom rods, I'm, I'm just debating. Do I buy a custom rod or I get some kind of made in China rod? So Why would I want a custom rod? What, what's, sell me on this. So, because I need help. Yeah, so custom rods aren't for everybody. Um, some people don't, maybe don't necessarily have the funds to afford one, which is fine. Uh, some people may be hard on their equipment and feel like they would break it so they don't want to buy it um we're, we're basically looking for one out of 200 anglers that walk through this door that um, are looking for a custom rod and basically it's when they get to a point where um they've tried uh some factory rods and they're just not happy with the performance or they're not necessarily uh, it doesn't it doesn't fit them uh, okay. size wise. Or... Here, I'm getting bored, and so I'm bringing in the big guns here. So we have David Riley, right? Yes, sir. Uh, from Life of Riley Fishing. It is. I follow you on Facebook. <laughs> I appreciate um, that. And he's one of your pro staffers. Yeah, yeah. And you fish with Jay's custom rods. I've been asking Jason so nice. He won't tell people buy my rods because they're better. He's he's saying yeah, if you can afford it, you might want to buy it. You know, Tell us why one might buy a custom rod. Why do you like custom fishing rods? Well, in my particular case, I'm not a small man. I'm six foot four, almost 270. And beautiful. I appreciate that. I would think so, too. My wife thinks the same thing. Um, but a guy my size and a guy who might be five foot three don't use the same rod uh, for the same technique. Uh, you go buy a mass produced rod off the shelf. They're all the same size. They say this is for everybody. And every rod is not for everybody. So right off the bat, custom rods for guys, um, it's uh, it's technique specific. Uh, They can cater to what you want. And then when you get into the aspects of them to be able to put names on the rod, your colors to coordinate to your shoes, to your boat, uh, to your wife's uh, jewelry, I mean, they can do everything. And they're they're Uh, nice people. Incredible people. I mean, they they work with you from start to finish. Mm -hmm. You tell them, uh, you can talk to them over the phone anytime, Eric or Ian, Jason. Anytime. Call at 3 a.m. In a little bit, we'll put their cell phone number. Please call them anytime you want. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, you tell them what you fish for and and what you're looking for, and they'll be able to guide you to the right uh, rod blank, to the right reel seat, uh, and really guide you from start to finish. And I'm going to transition a little bit. What is... What do you do, David Ryan? Like, what is what is it? What do you do? Y'all geared out. I don't know what you even talk about. Well, I, I am just a Bass Nation angler by trade. I'm actually a concierge full time during the day. I don't know what that means. You see uh, people I, in a restaurant? Uh, <laughs> concierge in a high rise condo. Oh, so cool. I sit behind a desk, and if they need, uh, you know, airport reservations or a limo, I get to do that all day long. That's cool. Uh, but my passion's fishing. I grew up fishing. Uh, my father and I. I learned to fly fish before I ever did anything else. That's amazing. And uh, every year since the age of six, I took a week vacation with my dad even up until now and then I, I turned him over to the dock side and went away from trout fishing to bass fishing Uh-oh. and uh, you know now he, he doesn't get to wet the line as much as he likes but you know I, I fish for the Bass Nation and what, for people who don't know what Bass Nation is it's the uh, 
it's the grassroots of professional bass fishing, like the Elite Series guys, the Kevin Van Dams. Uh, the Mike Iconelli is kind of like that. You said grassroots and elite in the same sentence. That's, to me, it seems like opposites. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations. It's so cool. I see you every couple of years or so. And so yeah. I'm always happy to see uh, you. We appreciate what you do, Clay. You guys do a great job with your Thank podcast. You. By, the way, to listen to. by the way, as of right now, we are just about to overtake Orvis Fly Fishing Podcast as the number one fly fishing, uh, fishing podcast on the internet. Fantastic. Uh, about fantastic. to crush them. That's so great. we were number 201 yesterday in iTunes. There's 15,000 shows in iTunes. We're number 13 right now. Orvis is number 10, and we're about to take them out. Fantastic. And they can suck on that. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, everywhere you turn around, you see an Efficient Nerd sticker here and there around the country, everywhere you go. Around the world uh, now, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's becoming its own nation, you yeah, know? Yeah, it is Efficient Nerd Nation. Cool, thank you. And that's JaceCustomRods.com? Yes. Perfect. And, of course, links to everything, including David Riley at fishners.com and all of our social media will always share everything they give us forever because we love these guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. With me at the giant Fish Nerds booth here by the waterfall is Captain Mel True from Fish Net Charters. Captain Mel has been on the show probably two times historically, about last year, year before probably, um, at the Rockingham Expo. Yep, that, that, right? that's right. Yep. It was uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bob Sumstrom from the Uzi J Company introduced me to you guys. It was... It was uh, it was a great relationship I got to meet you. You guys are awesome. I'm loving what you're doing. All right, thank, cool you so, thank you so much. Well, anyway, so we're here now. Um, as longtime listeners will know, we just finished a segment on how to become a fishing guide. I went to guide school. Um, we can move that a little bit. I went to guide school. Okay. Am I okay? Yeah, you got <laughs> it. Right. I went to guide school. I had to sit for the oral boards. I opened a business. I led my first trip. Those were our first four segments. And now I want to talk to other charter captains and find out what life is like for them as a guide. The noise in the background, by the way, is we're in a busy place and it's just people talking. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what's, you're a fishing captain. Do you make your full-time living as a charter captain? Uh, here in New England, it's hard to say that you're a full-time charter captain and able to sustain a you know full-time career just from that. You know, if you're a charter captain here in New England, you sort of got to be a man of many trades. Um, I have my fishing rod company. I have a lure company. I own Wicked Cooler. You own I, Wicked Cooler? I do. I yep. didn't know that was you. Yep. So I do that. I'm also an outdoor writer. I write for all the local magazines here in New England, and I'm also a professional photographer. I'm dabbling in some videos, so if you went to CaptainMailTrue.com, you'd see some of the videos I got going out. So you can't really make a living just as a charter captain. To get a cobble together. Now, do yeah. you make your full-time living in the fishing industry? Yes. You so do. so what I did, I've, I've surrounded myself with products. So when I come to a trade show like this, I'm not just a charter captain. I got my rods, my lures, my coolers. And you know, they, everything plays off of each other. So you can make an, so you know you book a couple of trips and that mm-hmm. makes you money for the weekend. Yep. But you sell a bunch of gear, right. it's easier to make the money for the weekend. Right. Especially yeah. if you have a lot of like items that are under you know hundred bucks or fifty mm-hmm. bucks, so mm-hmm. that people can really load up on. Mm-hmm. And it sure is fun. Let me tell you, it is. It's, it's a fun industry, and there's great people in the industry, and the people that come in, they're, they're just amazing. And you know, we, we were just giving away rods over there in our booth to come. You, know, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, come yeah. over. Come yeah, on. We just, I think just before I left, we handed out three rods. Cabela's is giving out combos for, uh, you know, just kids walking by at random. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. In, so. I love that. I yeah. love that. I, we don't make any money, so we're always trying to figure it out. And yeah. so as a new person, as a new guide, I've, I've led four guided trips so far. And all four have caught our targeted species and left happy, which is good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do when you take a charter group out and you're not winning? Well, it's it, you got a lot of you'd be surprised how um, understanding the customers are. They're just happy to be out there. Mm-hmm. You know, this is my job. I'm out there all the time. So, the scenery and the stuff that's all great, but that's my office. So it's like going to work every day. That's that's my thing. These people are looking around, going, "Wow, this is beautiful." You're taking through the islands, all right? You know, you, you sort of gotta you gotta entertain. You can't just be a, a charter captain. It's not all about catching fish. You gotta have the personality. You gotta have the social skills. You gotta understand. How far you can push these people? You know, if it's a family, a husband, a wife, and two young kids, you can't push them as hard as you would if you had, you know, four guys in their mid thirties right. that want to go hardcore. Right. You know, so you sort of got to play. in A successful trip is in the eye of the, the customer. 
not so much in your eyes. You know, in my eyes, I want to catch the, my limit of every species that's out there that we can possibly get, and that's good for me. Right. They might catch. We've had these. Uh, we were fishing off of the coast of Rhode Island and the, new, the Newport, and uh, the uh, the fish just weren't there. There were no stripers. So I said, I'm willing to run 20 miles into Buzzards Bay, and I can guarantee you. We will get on sea bass, and they will catch fish. People will be happy with that. These guys, booked, they booked the striper trip. They didn't say anything about sea bass, but I see these two little kids sitting there not catching fish, and the father's looking at me like, we got to get something for these guys. Because the kids don't care. So I went above and beyond, took these guys for a 40-minute boat ride, get on it instantly. We caught fish for an hour. I stayed extra time. And they had a great time. And so you put the time in. You put so the time in. It, it really comes down. Everyone says, everyone I talk to says the same thing. It's a customer service job. Yes. And fishing is part of the job. Mm -hmm. It's really about delivering good yep. service to your clients. Yep. Um, what is about being a guide? What's your favorite thing about being a fishing guide? Teaching new new people, introducing new people to the sport. Getting new people. I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it, it's fun to have the seasoned guy out there. You know, you know, this, I get a lot of people. I want to catch a fifty pounder. Um, I want, you know, I Which see you've done for, yeah. for Dan, right? For yeah, Dan. Dan. Yeah, we did. It was uh, un under the gun too on live TV. Well, not live TV, but we were doing it in front of the camera, oh, and uh, we, we were able to, to put a fifty-two point four pounder on the deck for him at twelve o'clock noon, oh. which was like unheard of. I'm Midday. Like, me? He was on the water. He was on the road at two thirty. I was on the road at three. Getting out there, and we caught a fish at noontime. That's fantastic. It was crazy. Congratulations. By the way, that's a. For, for those who don't know striped bass fishing, that's not a common fish. No, that's a, that's a fish of a lifetime for yeah, many people. That's a lifer. Mm -hmm. And I saw the nice uh, Giyotaku print of that fish. Yep. That was uh, for the Giyotakus when they take the uh, fish and they, they rub it down with paint and mm -hmm. massage it and yep. they print it on the paper. And it's yep. kind of a nice really, yep. really cool way of uh, preserving a fish memory. Yep. And I think in a lot of ways it's cooler than just a photograph. In, in, in my house, my wife's not a big hanging animals on the wall type of person. No. And uh, so I'm able to get away with, with putting up artwork. Well, and that's, that's yeah. okay. You know? Yeah, and it looks cool as hell. Look, you're lucky. You're, you're, you're like me. You're probably married up, and you're lucky to be with who you're with <laughs> my, anyway. My, so. my, my, my only requirement for a wife was she had to be smarter than me. <laughs> right, that's and easy, right? That was pretty that's, much everybody. Yeah, yeah. so, and, uh, totally and, yeah. and she's beautiful uh, to, uh, to add, so, so it was good. Yeah, totally yeah. win. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> yeah. uh <-huh. laughs> so that's cool. So if you were talking to a new guy, yep, and you were going to give that person one solid piece of advice, what's that advice going to be? You know, it, it it's it's going to take a while. You're not going to go in there and crush it. It, it. it the advice I got going into it, they said if you can make it, basically if you make it five years in the industry, you're going to make it. You you if you can survive on. Um, Working in in the outdoor industry, fishing as a guide, and you can make it five years, and you still can afford to do it. That's you're probably totally. you're probably gonna do all right. Yeah, I'm shocked. Yeah, I'm shocked, and I'm an ice fishing guide. I am shocked how much money I spend to take someone fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone pays me whatever they pay. Right. right. Almost all of it I spend on fishing gear. Right, and, and, and that's ice fishing. Think yeah. about. The forty thousand dollar truck I got to pull my boat, you know. And, yeah. you know, if I were to go out and buy a new boat, like it's eighty thousand dollars for a boat, and it's a hundred dollars for fuel for the day. I probably have at any given time four to five thousand dollars worth of rods on my boat. Yeah, there's all these hidden costs. <laughs> I, actually, I actually am doing an upcoming show on the hidden costs of guiding, yep. so I'll, I'll be talking about some of these things. Not to mention insurance. Ins I was just um, going to go there. Yeah. Permits. Permits. You know, licensing and, fees. And if you, you do it right, you got to pay taxes on all this money. Uh, and, and, and uh, yeah. you know. Well, lucky, well, if you're losing all the money. <laughs> you can write off, luckily, and, you know, all that's, you know, tax, tax expensive. So. Yeah, it, but it's still, it's, it's, but it's a fun industry, and you meet some great people. It is true. I, not, don't get into this business thinking you're going to make a lot of money at it. No. If you want to get into the business and enjoy what you're doing for work, and you can survive doing it, and you're happy. It's gonna. It, you'll never. You know. I just posted a, a post on Facebook the other day. I worked in the corporate world for 21 years. So I left there to do this. You know, first three years were really tough. And I'll be honest with you. And, yeah, it's, it's you know, tough. but I wouldn't trade it. I couldn't. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, that's what was my hope is to see the podcast get some money on the back end, mm -hmm. and then the fishing service kind of grow from there. Most of my trips I booked through the podcast already. So I'm on my own marketing tool. Yep, perfect. Which is nice. And people yeah. are people are wanting to fish with me because yeah. they know me on the radio. Yeah, so. and then that's why I got into writing. Yeah. You know, I'm not some scholar. I'm not doing. You know, I'm, no, I'm not going to write a number one book. But I can talk about fishing and I can tell my experiences. 
Yeah, and people seem to enjoy it, so. It's good, and people always want to learn new things, right. and that helps. Yep. And, and those of us who are always learning new things forget the things we learned last week anyway, so we yep. need those new articles. It, it's true, because there's times I get out there, and after a year, and I go, how did I tie up these rigs? What, what worked well last year? Because what I used last year, I probably didn't use it yet before, because it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say... A, a big tip for someone getting into the industry is having a network of people. Yeah. Um, as a charter captain, I, at any given time, I'm talking half half a dozen people, either text message or through Facebook. You know, where are you fishing? What did you catch? What's your plan? What did you find here? Yep, I've seen that yeah. when I've been out um, fishing. People are communicating where the fish, mm -hmm. and then the boats all head over yeah. there. And then you got the Googans who follow you guys around. Yeah, right? no, that's that's part of, that's part of the game. Part of the game. It's open water, right? Yeah, I don't have a boat that's. Uh, doesn't blend in very well. It's no, got I a, know. You got a big shark it's on got the side. It's got a big blue hole with a shark on the side yeah, of it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, and, you know, the people who follow me on Facebook, they see, you know, I'm catching fish. So I would I would follow you around because that's the kind of guy I am. So, <laughs> yep. Real quick, you've got an event coming up. You want to plug that? Yeah, yeah. The, bad, the third annual Bad Daddy Tournament uh, is hosted by Rick's Outboard in, in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. It's June 10th. For more information, go to CaptainMelTrue.com under the tournaments tab. And uh, it's a great tournament for the full family, yeah, everybody, kids, lots of great prizes, lots of great sponsors. It's, uh, it's a great event. Yeah. That's cool. And yeah. you can, as it comes closer, share all that on our Facebook page. Definitely. We'll pump that out so you're here, buddy, and we'll get the word out. So, hey, cool. Captain Mel, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey, brother. All right. Wow. Clay Groves, I am so lucky. So lucky because I've, I'm speaking to... Vance Zahorsky, Zahorsky's second in line to the throne of the Zahorsky Empire. So it's Darren from Line Cutters, as seen on Shark Tank. Heck yeah. You weren't seen on Shark Tank. I saw it. You were not there. Absolutely not me. Do you, do you have the same haircut as Vance? I do. See, that's is that part of the club? It's kind of. Yeah. I so, had a full head of hair before I met Vance. Yeah. So I mean, so I think most of the world now knows what Line Cutters is. It's that ring you wear on your finger and you just cut your fishing line with it. It's great. You're part of the Line Cutters team. What does that mean to you? You've been with him for a while, I bet. Yep, I've been with him now over a year. Yep. Um, I fish. So you knew him before he was cool. I did. Yeah. He's always been kind of cool to me, but yeah. Yeah. Yep, When it, once we hit Shark Tank, it was awesome. Um, but I've, you know, promoted the product. I fish for um, Line Cutters, um, and now I'm on the team as a, a sales rep. That's so cool. Now, kind of just between you and me, are you getting paid to be on the team? Uh, nope, not yet. Not yet. Not Come yet, on, Vance. Vance. Pony yep. up, man. You're now you're making it. So, right. but you're part of the team. Isn't it fun to be part of something that from the beginning was starting up, and now you've seen it blowing up all over the place? Like emotionally, it must be like exciting. What's it feel like to you? Yeah, it's really really cool because I mean, he believed in it. He's a great guy to work for, and he gets you excited. Now that we've been on Shark Tank, now everybody you know knows of us, heard of us. So it's just kind of cool to see how he started where he's going and what he has i mean he's bringing new products all the time the guy's a workhorse he, he really is i follow him on facebook if you're not already following line cutters on facebook or instagram get there because the videos that vance does are great he's always so excited about his new new stuff his little experiments he's doing i've been following for a long time now so forgetting all line cutter stuff sure because everyone knows all that and we're excited about it but we've done this vance has been on the show twice yeah what do you do um, I'm What's actually, your fishing thing? Um, I fish, you know, tournaments. I fish in leagues around. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, but I head out to basically anywhere there's a tournament, Iowa, North Dakota, Wisconsin. Um, take people out fishing, veterans out for fishing. Um, do a lot of ice fishing now. That's um, my favorite. Especially since we're in Minnesota, we get ice fish 11 months out of the year. That's uh, crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's been in my background my whole life, and now it's just being more competitive and, and getting more in-depth with it. Well, that's cool. And you got all kinds of other sponsors and stuff. We can do that. But uh, I'm excited. I always like to meet people who are making it in the industry and doing well. And so congratulations. Thank and you. We're excited to see line cutters making it. We feel like they're part of the Fish Nerds Nation. And uh, we're going to keep watching them grow and see what Vance does next. And Perfect. See what you do next. And awesome. We'll, and, of course, any of you guys want to share on Facebook anytime, share it with us, and we'll bump it right out. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. With Jason from the Mass Bass Boys. And i got to tell you, the first time I ever heard of the Mass Bass Boys, I was playing mini golf in North Conway. And there was a guy, one hole in front of me, who was playing far too slow. And I kept having to read the stupid Mass Bass Boys shirt all day long until the, until the brain was seared into my brain. And I thought, i got to go meet these guys. And so here we are today. I get, finally get to meet the Mass Bass Boys. I think it was that guy who was in front of me at mini golf. Um, at the, what is it, the Monkey Trunks or one of those kind of, I forget the name of the place. But anyway, Jason, welcome to the Fish Nerds. 
Welcome. What's going on, guys? Uh, we're having a good time. I've been talking like you have for two days straight now. What is the Mass Bass Boys? Mass Bass Boys is a group of fishermen throughout New England. We have uh, over 1,300 members, like I said, all the way out through New England, Red Sox, Patriots. we got it going on. Uh, we do charters. We do tournaments. We do benefits, expos. Pretty much more of a community than anything. Um, we've been going for two years strong. We're getting bigger and bigger every day. Everybody loves it. I can't complain. It's a, it's a great community, and uh, we're always looking for new members. So, And how can people find you? People find us on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, everywhere. Everywhere Mass people Bass, are, you are. MassBassBoys.com, we're everywhere. You own it all. And, of course, we'll link at Fishners.com. And you guys are selling clothes here, right? we, we got it going on. Did you ever think you'd be an apparel company? Honestly, no, I didn't. Yeah. But... Um, one, one little turn can make a, make a big chapter. You never, so, you never yeah. know, um, and it, it's a lot of fun, and it's fun to see you guys around the expo. You guys have a lot of personality. You carry it with you. Uh, are there girls in the Mass Bass Boys? Mass Bass Boys is actually co-ed. We yeah. do have women and men in it, just don't, hence the name Mass Bass Boys. It's unisex. It's for everybody. It sounds unisex. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. it's actually for rookies. It's for pros. we got pros. we got rookies. we got guys that are just starting to fish to pros that help the guys out that are just starting to fish. So. Well, that's cool. Now, I'm also a fishing guide in New Hampshire, ice fishing only. That's the only kind of guiding I do. Yeah. It's, for me, that's my... That's what it works for me. But if you guys ever want to come up north to the Conway. I live in Derry, so. You live in Derry? I used to fish. Come up here. Talk here. All right. So, what is your name? Josh. All right. Sorry, Jason. You're out of here. All right. All right so, this is Josh from Mass Bass Boys. You're fired. <laughs> uh, and he's from Derry, New Hampshire. I used to live in Derry. I used to work at the Taco Bell there. Yep. Which is gone now, right? Yep. And I used to work at the Applebee's. Yep. You're going to love So, uh, do you fish Beaver Lake? Yep. The Beaver. That's my favorite place. The Beaver. For bass fishing in the summer, and we've caught pacus there. Yep. Like, on the swampy side. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, about 15 years ago. Wow. I used to work at the... This is another true story about dairy. I, I don't know what I'm doing with telling my own stories. I used to work at the um, Domino's Pizza. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's still there or not. A delivery uh, guy. It, yeah, it's in dairy, but it's on the other side. And it, it was in the springtime. I was delivering pizzas to Cemetery Road, which is where I lived. And I have to drive past Beaver Lake. The Beaver, we call it. And I could see fish rising. So I pulled over to fish a little bit while p- delivering pizzas. By the bridge? No, there's a... Um, Right on, I forget the name of the road, but before the bridge. But it's, anyway, I was, I was fishing there, and another car with a domino sign pulls in next to me and gets out of his car, opens my door, takes the pizzas out, put it in his car, takes a big domino sign off and puts it on his car and he drives away. <laughs> and I got fired right there. So I love dairy. That's so cool. Yep. So those are true stories. So you're welcome. Mass Bass Boys, uh, anywhere social media is found. You guys are great. You guys are killing it here. I hope you're selling a lot of stuff. And come up to my way. I'll bring you on the ice. We'll have a really fun time uh, just talking about fishing, catching a bunch of fish, and a blast, okay? Yeah, we're down, man. All right, thanks, guys. Yep. Today we're talking to some of the best people. We're hanging out with Tiny. Tiny is the boss around these parts of the NEPVA New England. What is NEPVA? What is it? NEPVA is the New England chapter of the Paralyzed Veterans of America. It is a 501c nonprofit organization based here in uh, Massachusetts. That's great. And what do you do? So, besides being a nonprofit, what is your goal? What do you guys do? Our goal, in, in, on our behalf, we're just a small part of them. They have very a lot of different sporting venues that they do, but we are a little bit different. We are the only sporting venue that the New England chapter of Paralyzed Veterans have that go out and raise all our own funding. So 100% of our money goes directly into our funds. And what do you do with the money? What do you guys do? Well, we developed a a, a fishing program for Paralyzed Veterans. We started back in 1999. So you've been doing a long time. This is our 18th year. So primarily bass fishing, is that the goal? Primarily, uh, Primarily bass fishing. We do it with the help of different organizations, Ray Bernal from the Nom Knights. He's been with, with us from day one. Day one. And, and it's fabulous what you guys do. I mean, these guys deserve all we can give them. They're superheroes. Uh, and so the little bit you guys can do, the joy you bring them with fishing is remarkable. Um, and I, would, I think fishing is thing that makes everyone happy. Oh, yeah. And yep. these guys are, are heroes. They deserve to be happy. How can people donate and give you guys money? You want money? Oh, of course we want money. Right. How can we do that? How can we get money we, to you guys? We can do this by, if you want to make a, do, a donation to the 
New England Chapter of Paralyzed Veterans or PVA New England Chapter. It's www.nepva.org. And if you're donating for the Bass Trail, we just need you to mention on a memo that it directly goes to the Bass Trail or it'll go into the general fund. That's fantastic. And I'm going to tell you something, Tiny, right now. You're the first to hear this. This is a Fish Nerds exclusive. Our, our fans who listen to our show donate money to our show. We don't have any advertisers. Correct. So they give us a little bit of money to make the show happen. And I'm going to give the PVA 25% of our income from the month of January directly to you guys. It's not a lot of money, but it's 25% of a little bit of money I make. I'm going to donate to you guys. So our fans, listeners to the show, have already made a donation to the PVA. We appreciate it. I haven't given it yet, but I'll do it next week. Yep. You know, so, uh, And I hope that anyone listening who has more to give should go to fishers.com. We'll put a link for donations on our website, and you can get, click right through and give this cause some money. These vets deserve to have a good time fishing. They served. Let's give some money back and get those guys in the water having fun. Okay? Tiny, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate your generous donation. I hope it's generous. <laughs> I hope it's generous, too. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, but we'll take anything. Nickels, dimes, quarters. Hanging out with Northwoods Publication, publishers of the Northwoods Sporting Journal. I read this man. What is your name? Vic Warren. Vic Warren, and you are? Michael Georgia. And is this your magazine? Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's me to have a 25th year. 25 years. I've seen my friend Tim Moore on the cover of some of your magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw him. There he is right there. <laughs> He's here today. I haven't seen him yet. So I'll no, be, I I'll saw be, him. He's walking around somewhere. I'll be looking for him. All right, so uh, what is Northwoods Journal? We've been doing 25, 25 years doing this. What is it? All righty. Pardon? What's your pitch for Northwoods Journal? Oh, Northwoods Sporting Journal is the largest hunting and fishing newspaper in New England, maybe all of the East Coast. We got we sold the stores. 25 years. Yeah, thousand stores in Maine. Uh, well, I'll get your stories over in New York State, yep. upstate. I see it everywhere I go. So, yeah. Well, that's what I like hearing from people. Yeah, totally fun. I mean, it's fun to walk in, especially when I have friends on the cover and stuff. I walk in the store, I'm like, oh, there's my friend again. You know? Yeah. So now where, is, where does this go? So, so I'm, a, I'm playing from the Fish Nerds. It's a podcast. It's on iTunes. It's yeah. free. It's every, you know, we reach out to the whole world. And I've been doing it for five years. I'm also a fishing guide in New Hampshire. And yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to make new contacts, meet new people, and help promote people in the fishing industry. So that's what you're yeah, that's nice to know. Yeah, so nice meeting you. Thank you. Yeah, nice to meet you. I did a uh, 10-year TV show. All right, Clay Gross, FishNerds.com, hanging out here at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo, uh, Corrigan. Yes, sir. Which is name I kept getting wrong. We're hanging out. Corrigan is from, what is your, what's your business? I'm from Martha's Vineyard. It's, mm-hmm. My company is called the Ocean Cowboys. Ocean, yeah! That's Ocean right. Cowboys, That's right. uh, and you are a charter captain. Yes. Are yep. you? Are you? Do you do that for a living, or is that part of your life? I, I do it for a living. Uh, I, I run a charter fishing boat out of Egertown, which is on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, we focus on inshore and offshore fishing. Uh, we have a good season that usually runs from April until December. We focus on. Uh, a lot of fish education, getting uh, young kids out there, getting them excited about fishing, teaching them the ins and outs, uh, you know, what to do uh, to be safe on the water. Uh, it, it, and, and so as a, as, you know, I'm doing a series on how to become a fishing guide and what the business looks like. As someone who does this for a living, how do you make money, say, in, I don't know, February? <laughs> What do you do? Well, uh, in February, we're mostly concentrating on marketing, uh, touching base with our return clients, uh, social media presence, uh, focusing on maintenance of the boats, that sort of thing. Uh, we keep one of our boats in the water until the end of December, uh, and then we put it back in at the end of February, beginning of March, and we focus on codfish and other cold water species at that time of year. Happy to catch a bunch of those. So, and uh, so, I'm a species guy. I'm a big fan of fish diversity. For example, um, I, I, in New Hampshire, I went on a quest. I caught and ate every kind of freshwater fish in, in the state. And, <laughs> and I'm a big fan of eating rough fish. Okay. I love eating dogfish. Do you catch a lot of dogfish? We do. We catch a lot of dogfish out uh, east of the Cape um, when we're focusing mainly on codfish and bottom fishing out there. And what's the strangest fish you've caught? Any fish that kind of way out of place? 
Well, there's there's some pretty interesting fish that we catch out there. Um, out east of the Cape would probably be a sculpin. Those are a pretty neat fish. Yeah, like they're, a little dragon looking thing. Yeah, 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 delicious. I've eaten them. They're, they're pretty <laughs> awesome. And then south of the vineyard, I'd say the golden tile fish. What is that? They're usually in very deep water. They're a, an interesting fish. They uh, grow up and stay in the same area year round. So they don't migrate and they live in communities that they call pueblos. So they're, they're mostly found in muddy areas and deep water. Uh, we usually fish for them around 600 feet or more. That's insane. Now, so are you using like one pound sinkers to get down right to them? Or are you a little bit lighter Sometime, than Sometimes even more than that, depending on the current. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll use uh, like, I, I say up to a three pound weight with, you know, now, three or four hooks. Now, as an ice fishing guide, it, a one pound fish to me is a big fish, right? <laughs> so it's such a different planet of fishing that you're fishing on than what. It's amazing how, like, we do in some ways the same thing, but in other ways, so insanely different that you can't even compare them. It's great. Well, hey, no, thanks for, for coming sure. on the show. i got to go. Website one more time. Uh, well, look for us, uh, Ocean Cowboys, on Facebook. Um, and we'll link up, of course, at fishners.com and all the Fishners social media stuff. Anytime Ocean Cowboys shares anything, we will reshare that out with our clients. Perfect. So, thank awesome. You. Thank you for the time. All right. We always shake hands, but no one can see this. I know. <laughs> okay, mics are hot. Three, two, Clay Gross, Fishners.com, hanging out here at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. I'm staring right in the handsome face of Ryan Bebo from On the Water. Ryan, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing, Clay? I'm always awesome. Now, what is On the Water? So On the Water is a recreational fishing and boating media group that focuses mainly on the Northeast. So that's New England all the way down to Delaware Bay. We try to cover it all, anything that swims. Anything that swims. And, and you um, have been working for the magazine for how long? A little over four years, like four and a quarter, something like that. It feels like a lifetime, though, I'll tell you. And we see each other once a year and go, I've seen you somewhere before. And so we don't really connect on that level, but it's cool. Now, I read On the Water magazine, and I, and I like it because because you are regional, I see people I know in it all the time. And, and people submit articles to you a lot. I'm like, oh, I know that guy, I know that guy. And you're a freshwater fishing guy mostly? I am. I love freshwater fishing, but I'll tell you what, I'm really big into catching new species. It doesn't matter what it is, where it is, I just love fishing. Yeah, and I'm a species angler as well. I've caught and eaten every kind of freshwater fish in New Hampshire, so I've targeted each one and went after each single one of them. How many species of fish have you caught this year? I caught two new species this year, uh, American Shad and Lake Trout. I was very excited for both of them. And I believe I wrote something up about it and posted it on our website. I loved it. Both of them were fantastic catches. Yeah, those are two fish I've historically caught, and I've eaten both of those. Did you eat the shad? I didn't. I actually didn't eat either one of them, um, but I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to go back and try to do it in the future. I'd love to. Now, shad's Latin name is sabatissima. It means most delicious, so you really should give it a shot. That's really flaky meat in the herring family, so you know it's good. Is it like a mackerel, like a like an oily fish, or like a fatty fish at all? No, like a white, flaky, nice fish. So one thing I didn't mention is I'm a really big cook, too. You have to tell me how you prepared it. Is it baked, or is it seared, or, or was it? So the one we did, we, we baked it. So we just filleted it, and then we breaded it and baked it, and it was delicious. But you can cook it. Any, any way you cook a flaky white fish, you could do it. That sounds awesome. That must have been really thin, crispy fillets. It was super delicious. Yeah, you got me all now thinking about eating more fish. Now, lake trout, on the other hand, people, historically people do not like the taste of. So I'd be interested to see when you get one of those, when you do finally eat one, I want to see how you cook it. I actually caught mine out of season, but I wouldn't have been ashamed to sit there and cook it up. But I tell you, I bet those flays would have been a lot thicker than the shad. It was a big fish. That was like a 10-pounder. Yeah, much bigger. Um, the best recipe I ever heard for, and you probably heard this recipe, is you take the uh, fillets, you cut them in strips, roll them in bacon, fry them, and then you peel the bacon off and eat the bacon and throw the meat in the trash. It sounds almost like Thanksgiving turkey. That's awesome. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. So anyway, that's Ryan Bebo from Bebo. 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 Bebo from On the Water, and the website is? www.onthewater.com. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, I'm hanging out with Penobscot River Cabins with Jeff. Yep. Jeff, hey, welcome to the Fish Nerds. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Penobscot River Cabins, I assume you're fishing the Penobscot? Penobscot River in uh, North Maine. In Howland, Maine. Howland, Maine. Howland, Maine. Oh, right. <laughs> That's cool. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, we're going into our 11th season. 
and you sell the full package. That people come stay up there. We have cabins. Uh, we're right on the river. Um, we basically just cater to smallmouth fishermen. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, one of the premier smallmouth bass fisheries in the Northeast. Yep, I, I've been talking to a lot of people who fish that river. There's a lot, there's a lot of guides around here who fish that. Who've come down here to tell people, come to Maine to come smallie fishing. It's it's great stuff. Yep. Um, and and so you're fishing for smallies mostly. Do you guide as well? Or do I don't guide. Just, we just have the cabins. And so uh, people guide themselves. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of people come up and fish out of boats. They fish out of kayaks, canoes, uh, float tubes. Um, a lot of guys come up and fish from shore, so it's uh, just having a good time. Yep. And uh, in Howland, Maine, about how far? We're in, we're in the Boston area now. About how far north? About is that? four hours north of Boston. That's not too bad. No, nope. it's all off, it's all interstate. We're That's about six miles off the interstate. Perfect. And how can people find you guys on the internet? Uh, our website is PenobscotRiverCabins.com, and we'll put a link on Fishnews.com with these show notes. And Jeff, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks. Here with Phil Belcher Jr. Father of 17, uh, crazy fisher guy, sponsored by everybody on earth, uh, and we are exhausted. Like, yeah, you, I've never day. seen you burned out. You look I, I never get. I, I can fish till like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and then be up at 6 and ready to go, waking the kids up, getting ready for work. I can do that, no problem. Yeah. This working at a booth for like 12 hours standing up, my feet are killing me. I'm it, exhausted. It is, it's rough, but man, people are happy to talk to you and excited about it. Yeah. And you're here at what booth? I am working with Tsunami today, and I'm also doing tank demo time with Spro. Yeah, and I, I recorded some audio yesterday of you doing some tank time, and that will be in this show here. And Fantastic. It's a neat thing. Um, yeah. And the kids love the tank. They don't, oh, give, they, do. they don't care about your fishing. But they like to look at the big fish in the tank, and I'm kind of yeah. with the kids. And it's, what I love is the baits you're throwing. The baits you're throwing are bigger than most fish I catch. Yeah. Uh, which I think is just is crazy neat. Swim baits, yeah. I throw a lot of swim baits. Um, up there yesterday, I was throwing some of the 8 inch pros and 6 inch pros and some of the rats, which get over, you know, the rat, I think it's head to tail, end of tail is 11 inches long. Yeah, now I've thrown the rat. They're awesome. And, and of course, I, I don't have heavy duty gear, so I'm throwing it on 6 pound test on a, on a 6 and a half foot, you know, trout rod. Uh, but I did get a bass on it. And we'll have to. We'll, 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 we're totally hooked up with, I know some rods that are they're fairly inexpensive. Yeah. And we have a, today we're pushing, I just did the fishing, the TV show there, and part of that show I was fishing the, the Tsunami, or the entire show I was fishing the Tsunami Classic Series rods. Um, and today, like the spinning rod combo, the rod, which is a one to four ounce, is 40 bucks, red top. That's not bad. No, 40 bucks for a rod that can throw one to four ounces is great. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, but anyway, so the, the expo, we're here hanging out. Are you here all three days? I'm here all three days. Yeah, so you and me, we're going to be just wiped out by tomorrow. Yeah. Like I'm, I am. I'm looking forward to like eating something tonight, having a beer or two, and then going to bed by like eight o'clock. No, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm back at it first thing tomorrow morning, yep. and we'll, we'll, we'll still be. St- I'll be here all day doing the same thing. Same here. I I don't know how I'm going to edit all this together. Oh, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of yeah. work. But uh, Go Fish Dan brought us out, and it's been really good to He's us. Man. He did, um, you know, I've been to this show for a couple of years now. Even when it was back in Worcester. It's packed. This is an unbelievable uh, show. He well, did a great job. He promoted the hell out of it. He did. Uh, he was smart enough to bring the fish nerds in. Yeah, that's. Uh, you, I think you guys are the only reason it was a success. Must be. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I, w- I think at one point you canceled and like half the likes on the page was gone. Gone. Well, yeah. it was. It was uh, he has been asking me for three years to come, and for three years I've been going to a different expo, and just so I'm trying the new one out and see if I can't make something else happen for the show. Oh, so yeah. he came here, give it a go. I'm super impressed. We we'll see you uh, next year. Possibly. All right. We'll see. We're gonna, I'll, I'll know if at the end of all this, I have someone else paying for the podcast to get made, I'll be back next year. If awesome. not, I'm done with Expos. This, is, this could be my very last Expo. Oh, no. Because uh, as most people know, I do the show for free. Actually, I pay to do the show. It costs me $350 a month to make this podcast. Yep. Fans donate about $80 a week, which is wonderful. Yeah. And... And I, but I need more, and so I'm hoping to close some deals with advertisers this week and awesome. move things forward. And, I and hope uh, so. I've met. I don't want to see you guys go away, and I want to see you at Expo. So yeah, and and I, I, if I ever do come back to an Expo, I will bring a team with me, so that it's not just me here all weekend. Right. So now you guys do the Patreon, right? I know I, I still you give yeah Patreon.com/slash/fishnerds. Yeah. What I'm asking every listener to do, if you like the show, one dollar a week. Right, which is super sustainable. Yeah, yeah, and we have forty-eight dollars a year. I mean, it's 
that's it's right. nothing for it, you, a dollar for an hour of entertainment. And and we've been um, we've been it's been growing every week. So people are hearing the message and they're getting it out there, and they know that's how we show alive. Yeah. And and, I, and we do offer at higher levels, but actually we prefer one dollar. And we've quadrupled our listener. Our audience have quadrupled in the last two months. That's phenomenal. So the show anyone that's up. listening, you guys just need to stop what you're doing. Finish listening to this great podcast, obviously. You can and then do two done. things like yeah, this. You can multitask. Yeah. You're just listening. You're not watching it. Click a new tab open or, or whatever. Go to patreon.com. Follow the link from the Fish Nerds. I'm sure Clay will put it, put it in the link. And go down. Even if it's a buck a week, I mean, it's, it's really not a lot of money. But you're going to make Clay's life really, really happy. And mm-hmm. he wants to do this stuff. And I, I want to keep hearing. I've been listening to you guys now since, since, since the beginning. The beginning. Yeah. 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 And even, bef- even before we had the podcast, I'd you were be, following us. So. I'd be bummed if you guys went away. Um, yeah. And I'm sure a lot of other people would, too. So, I mean... Guys, just go do it. Yeah, Take a couple minutes, easy. A buck a week, go do easy. it. Easy. Don't think about it. But anyway, we're happy to see you, Phil. And we, I, I love seeing you everywhere I go, so it's really great. I've been seeing this year. We've interacted more than usual, which is cool because you've been yeah. successful. Uh, well, <laughs> more successful. Yeah. But in in what two weeks' time, you're going to be a dad again? Uh, four weeks four from weeks? now. But I did just just so you know, yesterday. Okay, Friday. my wife pregnant again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your, 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 no, your, wife, your wife is not. She's, she goes, she's doing four weeks, but yeah. she's already pregnant again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're getting to coming in nine months. No. Uh, Phil I, is, I, a, is just so, like, manly. Like, he yeah. just, his wife is always pregnant. Always, yeah. 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 No, actually, I just put my notice in at my, my full-time job yesterday. Yeah. Screw them. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm officially working with Trapper Tackle full-time. Officially making a living in the fishing world. Yeah. There's nothing nerdier than that, man. It's Congratulations. Dream, Thank you. It's remarkable. Uh, it's hard work. You put yeah. time in. You earned it. Um, you. When, if anyone says, oh, you're so lucky, say, nope. Nope. You put the time in. You met the right people. You talked to the right people. Right. Um, and you've moved forward. It's not a lucky game. It's a game of effort. It's a and, lot of work. Yeah. I mean, I, as you said earlier, I'm not, I don't really have 17 kids. I've got three and, and, and one on the way. Three quarters. Yeah, yeah and three quarters. Nine you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a month away from having four kids. Um, my kids Which are 10, 7. I'm insane. a soccer coach on two teams. I'm a baseball coach. Um, but I fish. I love to fish. But I, I make time for that. I mean, my, my life is my family first, my job providing food and putting you know putting food on the table for everybody and a shelter over their heads. But whenever I'm not doing that and the kids are in bed and the wife falls asleep, I'm out on the water. I don't care if it's 8 o'clock at night and I'll fish till 2 in the morning. Um, I put a lot of hard work. And then if I, if I can't fish that night, if it's raining or snowing, which usually doesn't stop me, but if for some reason I'm just not feeling it that night, I'm on the computer figuring out how can I help promote another company, how can I take things to the next level, how can I grow me as a person. Yeah, and you um, totally win. Uh, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you can follow Phil on Facebook. We, we're, if you're on the Fish Nerds page already, you're already following Phil. Can we share all his, all his successes there? I hope so. Thank you. Um, and, we're, and we're always so proud of the work you do. And, and we, we get joy out of watching other people be successful. Uh, so congratulations, Phil. Thank you so and much. And thanks for your time today. Uh, anytime. Cool. It's a crazy place. Dogs and cats are falling in love. I just don't know what to do anymore. But we're here with Clayton from Plum Island Surf Casters. And I have a man crush on Clayton because his name is just so beautiful. It makes me cry. Welcome to the Fish Nerds. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what is a Plum Island Surf Caster? Plum Island Surf Casters is a fishing club. We're based out of Newbury, Massachusetts. Um, We have monthly meetings, speakers, uh, club fishing trips, uh, and what I do with the Surf Mount, Palm Island Surf Casters is I'm the juniors um, coordinator, which is um, I work with the kids, the members. Well, they they put you with the kids because you're so young, yes. right? You know, yes. being 22 years old really Correct. gives you an advantage. It does working with those young millennials, right? It does. It does. It yeah. does. So, so what we do is <laughs> once a month we take the kids out fishing, um, depending on the season. We we do everything from ice fishing, carp fishing. Stuff like that um, with the junior members of the club. Perfect. And how can people find out more about Plum Island Surfcasters? They can go to PlumIslandSurfcasters.org. Mm-hmm. That's our website. And we're also on um, Facebook and Twitter under the same name. Now, now, I follow Plum Island Surfcasters on Facebook, as you know, and I'm constantly yep. sharing your stuff around. Yep. Um, because I like fish pictures. Yep. Um, I have, I don't know why, I've seen the same fish a thousand times. I never get tired of it. So Correct. I, I recommend anyone get on social media with Plum Island Surfcasters. If you're in the area, ask those guys questions. You know, check them out because they're going to help you find more yep. fish and learn more about fishing. And maybe if you're in the area and you live in the area, maybe join the club. Correct. You charge? Um, does it cost money to be part of your club? It's thirty-five dollars. Screw you! Thirty-five dollars. Use cheap bass. A year, I can't a year of membership. 
But that covers you and your family. Okay. That covers you and your family. Like I said, we have a lot of members-only fishing trips where we go out with a guide or, um, you know, like the local charter boats and stuff like that. So hey, that's cool. And you, so they just pay a discounted rate or they go for nothing Correct. or yep. whatever. And yep. That's going. It's always good. Fishing is about community and building community, for me anyway. And I it think is. for you guys is as well. Yep. And, and I feel like I'm part of your community even though I'm, I'm so far north, but I've been... It's, it's, all, it's all the same. With you. But We're it's all, it's one all thing. the same. What Correct. I've been saying, that everybody is fish are the equalizer. There's not a culture on earth that doesn't fish unless you're a vegan. Right. Uh, and then you're just counterculture anyway, so yeah. that's okay. But, um, but congratulations. And that's so Clayton from Plum Island Surfcasters. Check him out on all your social media. Correct. And if you're in the area, join the club. Join 35 the club. bucks. Bargain. 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 Right. 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 Awesome. Thanks, Clayton. Thanks, Clay. All right. ClayGrossFishNerds.com. It's the end of the weekend. The very last interview at the New England Fishing and Outdoor Expo. Uh, and I'm here with Michael. Michael is from Hook, Line, and Sinker. Michael, how was your weekend? It was great. I'm glad you saved the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so tell us, what's your, what is your product? What do you sell? Well, uh, there's a variety of things that I sell. The water deflector is a shield that protects your ice fishing sh- uh, tip-up. Uh, and that's the, like a corrugated plastic that, that kind of goes up, upwind of your tip up so your fr- holes don't freeze as fast is that the uh, correct there's a lot of uh, uh, uses for it uh, it keeps snowmobiles and ATVs from running over your stuff because they can see it correct and uh, it's easier to spot along the shore it collects the any snow or rain uh, that freezes up it keeps it off your trap 80% less uh, ice in, in the hole uh, s- several features that was super good and is that your big seller uh, it's one of my good sellers. Uh, there's a variety. I also have a uh, auger bag that's made of tough duck that's uh, second to none. Yeah, that looked really good. I'm, I'm, I, I really like that a lot. I like the, the float suits you were selling from the uh, Arctic Armor, and I really liked your uh, your anchors. The the bow tie. Uh, yeah, I, I'm one of those guys who uh, love ice fishing, but. I don't like the work associated with it. No, it should be easy, right? It should be easy. Uh, spend more time fishing and less time working. Yeah. Uh, well, the bo- those, those portable shanties, they take three seconds to set up and then 15 minutes of screwing anchors into the ice. Right? Uh, Is that the- I think uh, 15 minutes per anchor. Uh, <laughs> I've had those days. I've had those days. Yeah. Uh, with the bow tie, it's basically a 916 socket that goes on a steel 7-inch uh, bolt, and we weld on a... Uh, chain link. Uh, then we turn around and we pockerize them with a, an environmentally safe acid uh, so it doesn't go in the environment. And then we turn around and add a Get Some 1000, which is a lanolin environmentally safe uh, lubricant to keep them from rusting over. They're perfect. They seem like they see this really great. I'm looking forward to trying them sometime. And that's all the time we have, and that is Hook Line Sinker, official hooklinesinker.com, and you can find all the links at fishners.com. Michael, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for your time. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Ready for some fish in the news? <laughs> you love fish in the news. I love fish in the news. Yeah, I always have. Uh, now... Because we're at the expo, we thought it would be a good idea to use some of our vendors here to uh, help with the news. So this week's news comes from The Fisherman Magazine from the February 2017 issue. So this is pretty up-to-date stuff. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get political here. So there's only, there's only three actually news stories in this magazine, so we're going we're gonna to use the one I like the best, because it's my show. <laughs> so, all you right. have all the power. President Obama signs Outdoor Rec Act into law. And a significant step forward for the outdoor recreational industry and the sport fishing community, President Obama signed into law the Outdoor Recreation Jobs and Economic Impact Act of 2016. He signed this in 2016. He's not the president now. Right. (laughs) In case you're confused. The bill known as the Outdoor Rec Act passed the House of Representatives and the Senate in November. So uh, that's nice. The nice thing about hanging out here the last couple of days is I've been talking to all kinds of people from all different political backgrounds, and the one thing they all agree on is fishing is fun. It's, it's an equalizer. I haven't had anybody 
talk real politics to me in two and a half days, and I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it makes me really happy, especially because I, I, I got back to the hotel room and turned the news on, and I'm like, oh, ow, ow, I don't like that. It's so, back. <laughs> it's back, and, and I don't care where you fall, I'm tired of hearing about it, and I want to move forward. Um, the new piece of legislation requires the Department of Commerce, in collaboration with the Department of... Some kids screaming. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Department of Interior and the Department of Agriculture to assess and analyze the, con- the contributions of the outdoor recreation industry, including recreational fishing uh, for the United States economy. So for those who don't know, fishing is good for the economy. Uh, more important, if you want to help the local fishing economy, maybe you want to donate some money to the Fish Nerds podcast. Patreon.com. Look what I did there. Uh, let's not keep people up on that. <laughs> or maybe hire your local Fish Nerds as a guide to take you out one day. Um, anyway, it's a really great act, and what it does is it ensures that recreational fishing and hunting and all these state outdoor activities will be around for a long time. Um, and you read some of this already. What was the most important thing you read in this? I started reading. You interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> I got about as far as you read. Yeah, really, it's about <laughs> protecting jobs in the industry, and I think that that everyone in politics agrees that protecting jobs is one of the most important things that they can do, and this act does that. It's a nice kind of final act for Obama to do before he leaves office. And I'm not sure anyone would have a real problem with that, which is good news for us. No, and anglers love to spend money. If there's one thing they love to do is spend money. Uh, well, it gets me into thinking about other things. We're not going to do any more of that story. But uh, So New Hampshire was a big lead ban. Right. But it's not the case everywhere. Uh, and when that came into effect, how did that impact you as a fisherman? I got rid of a lot of lead gear. Yeah. I got a lot of tungsten gear. Yeah, and tungsten is crazy it's expensive. It's really expensive. Like, Tried the tin stuff, but it, it's garbage. Yeah, I, I don't mind the tin stuff. It doesn't have the same mass and density to it. It still works if you're in shallow water, but if you're fishing really deep, you really want to be on that tungsten, a little more dense. You know what also works really good is gold. Gold? Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's one of the most know, dense of all, right? It's not all that expensive. And doesn't hurt loons. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> if you... <laughs> it actually costs about the same as much tungsten. Yeah, exactly. But I, I always make a case for it. Like, whenever I'm at a show like this and I'm watching people spend money, and then I hear the same people complain about having to buy new fishing gear, I've never been a fisherman who hates buying fishing gear. Exactly. So I, I don't buy it as an argument. No, it's um, just another excuse to go out and buy more stuff. It's an excuse. They get out there and they buy more fishing gear and they have a really good time doing it. Um, but I, I think, and I would love to see the entire industry go lead free, including bigger stuff. Um, because what we know is that lead is always bad. Right. You know, if trace amounts of lead paint will kill, not kill you, but will, will cause brain defects in young children. Lead is bad for everybody. So I think I would love to see something else. And I know it's easy and cheap, but maybe easy and cheap isn't always our best our best way to go. So that's my diatribe on lead. Now, I need a background. You can hear the uh, owl presentation happening. Oh, that's a falcon. Do you see that? Oh, it's puffing up. Yeah, it's looking really upset. It's going to take your eye out. All right. So, hey, that's fishing the news. That's kind of, that sucks. <laughs> that was, that was- The best fishing the best we've ever done. Ever. We're just trying to get through this today. <laughs> a lot of people walking around here. Um, have you walked around the expo yet? I did a little bit. Tell us about your what things that you've seen that you've liked, some products. Be specific. I stopped by Wicked Fisher for a little while yeah. and talked to him. Dave that Curry. Was, Dave Curry was great. He's an awesome guy to talk if, to. If you're not already following the Wicked Fisher blog, uh, you can link back to that to Fish Nerds, but um, a nice little company who's all about building a fishing community. We might sell some hats here. Oh, look at I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell. How's it going? Good. Have you heard the fish nerds? Right. We do a weekly podcast called the Fish Nerds, and we're just recording right now. Um, that's how you get subscribers on the podcast. I was gonna say, play the best promoter ever. So okay, yeah. So you want to take a, some notes here, kids? If you listen to the podcast, <laughs> and you, if you own a podcast, and you want to get more listeners, you go to where your listeners are. That's your niche. And you tell them what a podcast is, and you take their phone from their hands, and you subscribe. <laughs> you press the button. That's what you. I did. That's what I do all day long, and it's making a difference. So anyway, that's the, that's the whole show. We're not. We just record a whole show together. We have so much quality content. Quality. Who's better than us? The best. <laughs> so that's it. You listen to a couple of fishers when you should have been at a fishing expo. We would like to thank uh, Go Fish Dan for inviting us to come to the show this week and our families and friends for supporting us. So until next time, remember the code of the fish nerds. Spawn early and often. And avoid free lunches with strings attached. And swim against the car in every chance you get. Perfect.